Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreation programming session with Mr. Zuzin, as usual, as usual. So, um, yeah, we are recently uh, been developing our game, which is called Coil, right? So here is the game. And it's a multiplayer game and it, it basically has a client in a browser and a server that is communicating via web sockets. So the thing is, um, client and server, they already written in a C3, right? So if you never heard about C3, you probably never heard about C3. It's a very niche language. Uh, I picked it up specifically because there's not that many fucking normies programming in it. So the culture around this language is pretty chill. It's pretty engineering oriented. It's always like on point. None of that hype driven shit in other languages. So uh, yeah, so the client and server is already written in C3 and compiled WebAssembly and stuff like that. The server is actually um, basically using Node Right, so the, the logic is written in Wasm, uh, right, and then we use a node to actually start the server. And the, the reason why we use a node is because we're using a WebSocket implementation from node. So, and the thing I wanted to do, I wanted to actually use, um, you know, some sort of a native WebSocket library and completely get rid of JavaScript on the server side. So this is what I wanted to do. But unfortunately, as far as I know, there is no really C3 uh, WebSocket library written anywhere, like I, I quickly Googled up, I quickly searched up and there was nothing in there. So, and uh, yeah, I decided to write my own, right? So because language is in the state of being developed currently, it's not fully developed. So there's not that much stuff uh, is written in that language. And that's a good opportunity to maybe contribute to that, right? So, and write my own library. So a lot of people, when they see new languages, they look uh, at the lack of libraries and they don't use that language, right? Uh, a real engineer, a real engineer in that situation, instead of not using language, would just try this library, right? Because like, how do you think these libraries get created? Do you, do, do you think they just appear out of nowhere? Just magically grow on trees? So somebody has to create them. Yeah, sorry to tell you that, but somebody ha has to actually sit down and fucking write the library. And who do you think writes such libraries that magically appear on NPM so you can then install it? Fucking crazy nerds like me, as usual. I already told you that. I already told you that in the past. Fucking crazy nerds like me do this kind of shit uh, for you. For you. And that's what we're going to be trying to do today. So some time ago, as an experiment, I actually implemented a little bit of a WebSocket functionality in PRC for educational and recreational purposes, right? So here's the library. And as far as I know, uh, it's obviously not finished, right? So I just like played with the idea a little bit and I just abandoned it for a while. No, didn't abandon it. I just paused it. None of my projects are abandoned. They just paused. Right. I can get back to uh, any of my projects at any time. None of them are abandoned. They just pose. So I paused this thing for a while and uh, now I'm coming back to that. And the thing I wanted to do today, I just want to like, take this library and port it to C3. Right. So one of the things I remember about this library, right, is that I had a little bit of a problem with memory management here. Right. So because WebSocket protocol is built that way that you want to allocate a lot of temporary buffers to send and receive the WebSocket frames, I think they're called. I don't remember the specific about the terminology, but uh, so there's it, they're split into these sort of like packets or frames or something like that. And you really want to have like a lot of temporary memory allocations. And in C, it was kind of a pain in the ass, but luckily in C3, there are temporary, uh, you know, allocators, which we can probably utilize in this specific library. So there's not that much code, right? So it's a client only library. So the first phase is going to be porting this a little bit of a code to C3, uh, right? And then the next phase is going to be probably implementing the server side, right? So the client side and server side is pretty much the same. I think the only difference is like how you send out the handshake. Uh, the interesting thing about WebSocket protocol, by the way, is that the handshake looks like a freaking HTTP request. So th th that's what it does. It looks like HTTP request. And then after you establish the WebSocket connection, it's just TCP connection, 
right? So, and in case of the client, it is pretty easy to send a handshake because you can literally have code uh, the handshake. So, and just literally works. On a server, you kind of have to parse it and understand if everything correct and stuff like that. So probably this is the reason why I didn't implement the server side because I didn't want to mess with the handshakes and stuff like that, uh, right? But in any case, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna just grab this library. Uh, I probably first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually test it out, make sure that it still works, right? Because it's been a while, right? So it's 2021, right? So I wrote it in 2021. So uh, I just wanna test if it still works, right? Then we're gonna go ahead and try to port it to C3. And uh, yeah, then we're, we're gonna see what's, uh, what's gonna be, um, what's gonna be next, right? So after everything is finished, I'm gonna integrate this library into, into my game. Uh, right, and also I'm gonna publish it obviously, right, for anyone to, to use. So that's gonna be the plan for the day. That's gonna be plan for the day. Okay, so let's actually grab this library and see if this motherfucker still works. How about that? How about that? I don't freaking know. I haven't tested it in a while. So let's clone it. Uh, it doesn't even fucking clone me because I forgot to put a space in here. Uh, all right, so we're cloning. So uh, now, do we have anything? S okay, so it's a header-only library, as far as I can see, and there's a bunch of examples in here. Okay, so th this is an echo example, and there is an echo. Whoa, 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 whoa. There is an echo websocket.org. I I never knew about. That. Well, I mean, I knew about that, but I forgot completely forgot about it. So, uh, WebSocket X server. So we run a free, very simple endpoint server with this uh, support for WebSocket. And oh, so this is actually kind of useful, right? So we can we can test it out and stuff. Uh, all right. So here is the build script. Uh, so it does need package config, though. Do I have package config? Uh, okay. So I do have package config, and also it needs open SSL. Um, right. So because it actually does that over. WSS, right? So it's a basically secure WebSocket protocol. So WS is just a regular one, plain text one. And then you can do a similar thing as with HTTPS, right? So you can basically slap open the SSL connection into it and it's going to be secure automatically, uh, right? So, and I don't really know if I have open SSL development stuff. So let's actually try to, yeah, there, there is nothing in there, but this is only a C flag. So maybe I also have to do libs. Uh, yeah, okay, so I, I do have something apparently. I do have something. Anyways, let's try to run build.sh and it built this entire thing successfully. So it still works apparently. So it links with libcrypto, libssl and stuff like that. Uh, and let's just freaking run it and see maybe it does something useful. Uh, all right, could not establish SSL connection, uh, unexpected end of file. <laughs> well, I tried, uh, I couldn't establish SSL connection. Classic, yeah, freaking classic, but I wonder if I even need to. Uh, so, unexpected end of file, maybe it's, it doesn't work anymore, maybe there's something with the echo server. Uh, who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows. So here we initialize the algorithm and stuff like that. Um, so it would be kind of nice to maybe try to establish a connection without any open SSL. It's one of the things we could do, right? Mm -hmm. So there is an echo server. So 43, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't even freaking know. Let's go ahead and maybe clone it. So, um, so this is more like SSL. Uh, so this is what we're gonna have in here. So this is SSL version of this and that thing. Uh -huh. And let's maybe copy paste it and do echo plain dot c. Right, so this is going to be a plain connection. So um, I suppose it's going to be 80, right? So without any sort of secure connection or anything like that. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe get rid of the open SSL. So that's one thing that we probably need to do. And let's go ahead and build the plain version in here. 
So in fact, what I want to do, I only build only the plain version, right? So what I did in here, I'm going to do a little bit of a compile assistive refactoring. I just get rid of open SSL and it's probably going to break everything. So let's go ahead and just go to the compilation errors, right? So, and that will help us to explore exactly what the fuck is going on. So you int 16 max and you're telling me that it's not declared, which is kind of weird, uh, right? So because, well... I suppose it is declared somewhere in the limits, right? Isn't it? So I think it's it's limits. Okay, because remember, you int 16 max. I'm pretty sure it is limits. Uh, yeah, or maybe std int. Look at that. Mm, you int uh, 16 max. Uh, it says that it's in std int, so let's actually include std int for now and see if it's, it, it fixes this problem. Okay, pra. Um, I think this kind of stuff uh, is defined in somewhere int types. Uh, yeah, so int types. It's kind of weird how in C you have, uh, you know, std int. And then int types. <laughs> Honestly, there's no logic behind the names of the headers in C, like whatsoever. It's just it's just like whatever. Uh, right? <laughs> there's never logic behind all any of that. So okay, so here we're reading the sockets and shit, and uh, I suppose can we just have a like a regular read? Uh, right. So obviously this is a function that gets passed into our library, into the header library. Uh, we can actually take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the library that I wrote, uh, you are supposed to specify your custom functions for reading and writing and stuff like that. Uh, right, there you go. So you're supposed to create this structure. Uh, right, so you create a socket, which is essentially, uh, I suppose it's just an, yeah, it's an opaque pointer. Look at that. Right, so it's an opaque pointer, uh, right, and then you have a bunch of functions like read and write, which operate on that opaque pointer type, right, that's what they are, and if you take a look at the definition, so here they are, uh, right, so in here are like just basically the adapters, right, so we just pass them in here, since I'm trying to strip off any of the, um, you know, SSL stuff, I suppose the socket is going to be just an integer, right? So because in POSIX there is a, a syscall read, right? And in here, as you can see, it just accepts a file descriptor of the socket. And I suppose what we're going to be doing, we're going to be storing the file descriptor, the value of the file descriptor, sort of like as a pointer to fit into the interface of the library. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So, and I suppose I'm going to just do that. And I'm going to literally cast a pointer to an integer. I'm not sure how good of an idea that is, but I mean, we can just try. Um, right. So, and that's about it. So I, I think I'm going to call this just like CWS read. Or maybe we're going to call it actually plain. Right. So since I renamed this cell to plain uh, in the name, so we're going to call it like CWS plain. All right. So let's go to the rest of the compilation. It doesn't like casting the pointer to a different integer size. Well, we can actually cast it to maybe, uh, you know, int 64t, so, because that's the, okay, so th that liked it, um, right, so it liked, maybe we, we should have actually done something like long, right, so essentially read still accepts integer, Right, I'm pretty sure it still accepts integer, but we're casting it too long, so to not lose any precision or anything like that, right, so it basically takes the value of 8 bytes, it converts it to reinterpret it as a value of another 8 bytes, but then we're passing it as an integer, so it will truncate everything accordingly, hopefully, that's, that's the idea at least. Right, so here we have a plane, and we're literally doing the same thing, All right, so we're going to be just converting it too long. Uh, right, so what's the next compilation errors we have in here? Okay, so here we're creating a bunch of context for SSL. Do you guys remember you in PTRT? This is a good idea, actually. I, I forgot about you in PTRT. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much. You in PTRT is basically like an integer, unsigned integer, big enough to fit a pointer. 
right that's what it is yeah so it's, it's actually better for for this kind of stuff right because it semantically at least explains what it does thank you thank you so much that's a good idea actually all right so here we have a bunch of open ssl bullshit if you ever worked with open ssl library you know what the fuck all of that is do you I think you do know what the fuck all of that is, right? So it's just a bunch of context. It's just like it's created by the same people who like OOP in Java or whatever. Uh, right, so obviously what we're going to be doing, we're going to be fucking nuking all of that shit. Fuck that. Uh, so more is, uh, establishing plain and SSL connection to... Ooh. Uh, to... Oh, this is actually kind of interesting. So... I put it to do in here so because I want you to establish all these connections within the library rather than, um, you know, outside of the library, right? Because it's kind of a pain in the ass in here, just like that. Anyway, so here we establish and play connection. If you want to establish like an encrypted connection, you always have to establish first the plain connection and then you have to call to some open SSL bullshit to wrap your socket into uh right into a secure socket or whatever the fuck it is right so what are we doing in here i suppose this all of that stuff is needed to resolve the addresses right so because the host in our case if you take a look at that it's actually name so we have to do like a dns resolution stuff and it's uh, done by this specific function i suppose uh, honestly i haven't looked at that code for like three years already so it's 21, it's 24 now. So yeah, I haven't looked at this code for three years. So I do not fully understand it either, right? So what I'm showing you right now is an art of, um, you know, working with your old code. I, I literally haven't looked at that code for three years and I'm looking at, it, uh, looking at it for the first time in three years on stream live in front of you. I haven't looked into that code before this stream, seriously. I swear, I didn't look into that. So, and the way I treat this code as basically someone else code, right? So, yeah. So essentially, I always treat my own code as someone else code. All of the code is the same for me, right? And I use the same techniques of exploring my own code and someone else code. Right. And because of that, I can quickly, um, you know, relatively quickly uh, explore someone else code and also recover my old code because it's the same concept for me. Right. So uh, it's the same concept for me, actually. So um, and uh, one of the techniques that I use in here is basically compile assist refactoring. Right. So that you just saw. Uh, which is uh, essentially you I do some uh, modifications right and I just follow the compilation errors right so my goal is to uh, basically get rid of the you know SSL part so and what I did uh, is essentially I just removed the SSL headers and stuff like that and just follow the compilation errors So, and once you master all of these techniques, uh, right, so you don't really care anymore whether it's your code or someone else's code and stuff like that. So, okay. Uh, right, so let's actually go through the rest of the compilation errors. And uh, yeah, so here we are um, initializing OpenSSL. OpenSSL being weird like that, you have to call OpenSSL add all algorithms, whatever the fuck that means. Then SSL load error strings. <laughs> <laughs> like i always look at this function and it's just like always thinking to myself like why the fuck is that a step in the initialization of the library that is explicitly called by the user it's just like um <laughs> must initialize some tables in cd yeah yeah exactly so anyways uh, we don't need to do any of that stuff. But I mean, I would like to still work a little bit with the plain connection algorithm in here. Uh, right, so we perform the connection and uh, so this is the socket, right? So this is basically the socket. And where is the SD? Oh, so here it is. Here is the plain socket. And this is the socket that we're going to be using for, um, you know, for functions like uh, read and write and so on and so forth, right? So, and because of that, maybe it makes sense for us to actually make it uint ptrt, 
Maybe that's what we're gonna be doing. Is there just int ptrt? I wonder. Is that a thing? So let's actually try to compile and see if uh, if it. Did. Okay, so it didn't complain about that at least. So here we initializing an SSL connection. Since we're gonna be getting rid of the SSL connection, maybe fuck that. Fuck that, fuck that. Uh, so um, let me, so it has to be just SSD. So this one is plain. And we're also passing uh, functions for allocating shit, right? So here is the malloc. Do we have the malloc? I think malloc is actually part. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this is an adapter to malloc and it accepts a pointer. So this is needed so the library supports allocators, right? Custom allocators. So essentially you have a function that allocates some, some memory, but it also accepts the state of the allocator explicitly. But since the malloc that comes uh, with the standard libc library doesn't really accept this extra parameter, so it's kind of like ignored, uh, right? So that's basically what it is. So here we are, okay, so we're sending the handshake which is cool, okay, then we're just sending payload and stuff like that, suppose now I can get rid of the SSL, uh, everything SSL related can be just nuked out of that, okay, so SD, it doesn't like something about SD, near initialization, void, uh -huh. so that's totally fine, we can just do something like this, Okay, that is very cool. One thing I would like to change, since there is such thing as int ptrt, I want to use it. So the reason why I'm using int ptrt is because, as you can see, socket in here can be actually negative. In case when I create the socket, uh, right, so it fails, uh, so I need to check whether it's negative or not. So because of that, I, I, I don't want to use unsigned one. Uh, yeah, and also in here I actually do minus one. So that's it. I, I just modify this code, and this code, you know, compiles and doesn't use OpenSSL. Uh, interestingly, it still links with the OpenSSL because, yeah, because that's how we build everything like that. Uh, and I suppose maybe it just means I have to get rid of this stuff, right? So we just use C flags, and uh, yeah. So there we go. So this entire thing, uh, if I take a look at LDD, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so let's actually try to run this entire thing. And uh, yeah, it did the thing. Uh, it didn't fail, but it didn't print anything either. I wonder why though. Uh, I wonder actually why. So, okay. So this is how we do that. Uh, we have a payload, we, which is uh, lorem ipsum. Uh, right, so we then allocate some stuff, we just send that message, right, we send this message, the payload, then we receive some messages, then we're logging some messages, okay, so when we're logging the messages, okay, so we didn't receive anything whatsoever, surprisingly. Mm -mm. So we didn't receive anything surprisingly. Okay, so maybe there is something with, um, you know, with the echo server, right? So because we couldn't connect via HTTPS and we kind of couldn't connect via just like regular HTTP. So there must be something wrong with it, right? So maybe there is something wrong with it. Um, so I don't even freaking know. So here we're just sending that and send that. Uh, so we can print something in here, for example, message uh, sent. Uh -huh. And uh, let's actually rebuild the whole thing. And uh, yeah, so message was sent, but we haven't received anything. Okay. So one of the things we can do, we, instead of connecting to the WebSocket echo thingy, we may try to connect to Coil Server. Why not? We already have uh, basically WebSocket server to which we can connect. Uh, right, so we can already do that. Maybe return less one. What, what are you, don't say cryptic things. Uh, Okay, whatever. So, uh, let's actually see. <clears throat> right, so what was the what was this thing? So this is the coil and uh, let's try to do run. Uh, so let me, maybe I'm gonna rebuild everything just in case. Uh, 
Right, maybe I also have to fetch the latest stuff from Coil. Let's actually quickly do that. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Origin main. Okay, so npm run uh, build. So first, we need to rule out the fact that the server is just broken. Okay, so we need to rule out that fact. And only then we can think about oh whether it's a good way to handle errors like that or anything like that obviously i don't remember anything about this library uh right so um i don't remember anything about this library isn't the problem caused by server? like i don't know we need to rule that out people okay whatever why am i reading chat uh so serve uh let's actually do the serve and it's at 69.70. All right. So uh, I'm going to freaking connect. Uh -huh. So 69.70. Uh, 127.001. Maybe I'm going to just do localhost, right? So because it wants to resolve the addresses and stuff like that. So let's actually do localhost. And uh, let's just try it. Okay. So we received something. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, so, and we received four bogus amogus messages. <laughs> this is cool. So it works. The library actually fucking works. Uh, so there's something wrong with the server right now. Uh, so this is kind of cool. Um, so, and obviously it was sending actually lorem ipsum, right? Uh, which is not correct messages. Uh, and it was receiving back uh, a bunch of like garbage, right? And all of them consist of like a zeros and stuff like that, but. But anyway, um, so if it's a binary shit, uh, I think instead of printing that binary shit, it should have been actually the bytes that we received because otherwise it's kind of useless. Right. So how do we do that? Um, right. So we received the chunk and so opcode name, message kind. So I suppose there's only two kinds of opcodes. Uh, right. Has the WebSocket implementation also TLS support? Uh, it's actually abstracted out for in the library as far as I can remember, right? So the library is not concerned with the connection itself. As already demonstrated, the only thing that library knows is abstract socket type, which is a peak pointer, and the read and write defined on that socket. The library doesn't know what is the socket and read and write operation you as the user of the library define it yourself it could be ssl socket it could be plain socket i just demonstrated that um all right so here's the thing uh when we are uh row log oh we have a special thing that checks whether it's a oh huh okay i didn't know that all right so that means i can just rebuild okay all right, this is kind of cool. Uh, oh, yeah, I know that. So this is probably, I don't remember, I think zero is hello. Uh, yeah, I think zero is hello. And one, we can actually take a look at what kind of messages are those. Uh, what kind of messages are those? So if we take a look at the coil, um, so what are they? Uh, it's it's probably something common message kind yeah so zero is hello and the first byte in here is the kind of the message right the first byte in here is the kind of the message so zero is hello then one is player joined so it's we probably received a message about player joining uh, about us joining us actually right so we joined and then we have eight which is rather interesting so it's um, zero one two three four five six uh seven eight oh and it's okay so this is basically what happened uh the server started to send uh the state of the scene right so what kind of items are on the scene and stuff like that right so and it sends them by telling okay spawn an item here 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 and here and that's how you restore uh the state of the scene right so we can even connect to the server right so the the correct way to use the server is like this so i just joined to uh, like the server and you see all of these items the client knows about all of these items because it receives item spawned uh, messages right so that's that's why it knows about them. Um, all right. 
Okay, cool. Uh, so the library still works. The library still works. The server doesn't work, uh, but that's totally fine. So we confirm that all of that shit works. And now we can try to go ahead and port this library to C3. So how we're going to be porting this to C3 is rather interesting. I suppose I'm going to be just going through uh, through the code and just copy pasting some parts and porting them. Uh, right. So there is also I will recover, uh, you know, in my head how to work with WebSocket protocol and stuff like that, because it's been some time ago when I worked with all of that. I think I was just like literally following RFC. Uh, right, so this specific RFC. All of that is obviously going to be in the description. Um, right, so in the description, I'm going to just give you the link to the original library, and within the original library, you can have RFC. Uh, right, I think I, I think I was just following this specific stuff. Uh, but it was a long time ago. I'm not sure if the stream where where I was implementing this library even survived because at the time I was not even archiving my streams that much, so maybe it didn't survive. Anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and maybe um, create uh, a separate folder for this library. So how am I going to call this library? Um, so this one is CWS. Maybe the one is going to be C3WS. Is that, a, is that a good name for this library? Uh, or maybe it's going to be something like WSC3. C3WS. Okay, so you guys like C3WS. All right, so makes sense to me, honestly. Uh, makes sense. Uh, so let's actually do something like WSC3, right? And it's going to be just a, just a module, right? So, and I don't really know. So just let's just call WS, right? So this is going to be the main module where we're doing all that. Uh, and on top of that, maybe, just maybe, we're going to have some sort of an example, right? So this is a package, uh, not really package, module. Uh, example and one of the things it does it imports WS and it's going to be using WS uh, right so we'll do fn void main and in here maybe for now I'm gonna just put a hello world uh, so std io io so print n and I'm gonna say hello web sockets le sockets le sockets so the build sh right so i'm not using c3 build system i do not fucking understand it i don't fucking understand why there is some sort of a fucking json in my system language honestly i just i just don't understand like i look at c3 build uh system and it's just like yikes bruv yikes ew brother ew what's that what's that brother so it's just like, what the fuck? Why there's a JSON in my fucking compiler? No, I'm not using that. I'm sorry. Sorry, nothing personal. Nothing personal. But I think in such languages, there should be no JSON whatsoever. Anyways, so we're going to do compile. And I'm going to just compile, um, you know, example C3 and WS C3. So, but to be fair, right, for this library to be usable, uh, by other c3 programmers i will probably have to turn this library into the c3 project and using their cringy json build system at some point right i won't like it but at the same time i'm trying to maybe contribute some value into the community and because of that i will have to adhere to the standards of the community even if the standards are fucking cringe so is the life of a software development developer so is the life of software developer you can think that some particular technology is cringe but sometimes you just have no fucking choice right so because everyone is doing fucking cringe so you, you kind of obligate you to also do fucking cringe um right it's, it's like with javascript i don't like javascript i think it's fucking cringe it's the cringiest tech written uh in the history of humanity honestly i think it's a crime against humanity but Everyone is committing this fucking crime against humanity all the time, so I'm kind of forced to do that as well. So, yeah. So that means at some point I will have to go and learn that build system for C3, so I can create a library that is sort of reusable by other C3 people who also use the same system. So anyway, um, it is what it is. It's fine. It's normal. It's the reality of software development. Uh, so, yeah. I kind of learn how to live with that. Uh, so, uh, 
do. We've got an example, everybody. We just build an example. All right. So we have hello web sockets. Uh, le socket, uh, le socket. <clears throat> so uh, let me see. Um, honestly, maybe it makes sense to actually literally call it C3WS. Since it's C3WS, let's just call it C3WS. Right, because why not? Because it, it's a little bit more consistent that way. Um, <clears throat> C3WS. Uh, okay, so it's going to be build. Cool. So. What I need to do, I think I need to just open uh, CWSH and just start porting shit. Uh, first of all, I'm going to copy paste the uh, license. So 2024, let's put 2024 in here. So the first thing we're going to be porting, we're going to be porting enumeration. enumeration. So this is an enumeration of the opcodes. So that's what it is. So as far as I know, I think uh, C3 won't allow me to call enumerations like this, right? So, because they have to be like that. But I'm not 100% sure. So these opcodes, um, okay, so if I remember correctly, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, WebSocket protocol is actually kind of a mix between TCP and UDP. So TCP is a stream protocol. So that means you basically send a stream of bytes. UDP is a datagram protocol, right? You send like discrete pa uh, packets, right? You send discrete packets. Uh, the weird thing about TCP is that uh, it's a reliable protocol, but UDP is a reliable protocol. WebSocket is a reliable protocol which is not stream oriented but rather frame or datagram oriented so it's kind of a mix between tcp and udp so it has these frames it's a framing protocol on top of t yeah, yeah exactly uh, thank you Spirit man right so it's a framing protocol on top of tcp which is actually kind of based honestly it is kind of based because in majority of the situations when you use tcp you rarely fucking need streaming so for all of the use cases of TCP, you kind of want to have discrete packets. On the other hand, when you do UDP, you want to do streaming because usually UDP is used for like, you know, uh, low latency things like video and audio and stuff like that. So you usually want to do streaming on top of UDP. Like, how did we end up like, is that intentional or is that an unintentional? Right. So... TCP is a stream, but in TCP, when you use TCP, you usually don't want to stream anything. UDP is like, you know, discrete, but when you use UDP, you don't want discrete things. You want to actually continue stream. It feels completely accidental, right? So it feels completely accidental. And maybe it is accidental, and that's why WebSocket were trying to kind of fix that by introducing a little bit of a framing on top of TCP. Um, and then the, the, then the next thing is quick. I honestly know nothing about, about Quick except that it's a UDP-based protocol that is replacement for HTTP or something like that. Um, you want the reliability of TCP and frames of UDP exactly. And that's exactly what uh, WebSockets are doing. So do you even need CWS prefix? Yes, you do, because the namespaces are do not work in C3 on types. <laughs> I don't remember. Like I think, like you do want to prefix types in C three because for whatever reason, <laughs> I don't remember. There is a good reason for that. Uh, so, um, but anyway, let's try to build this entire thing. And what do we have in here? Uh, no associated values are defined for this enum. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, associated values are defined for this enum. Oh, so do do you want me to actually do something like this, or what? What, what the fuck do you want from me, bro? Okay, so what if I do something like this? Okay, okay. So if I do something like that. 
You just don't allow me to do that. But then, can I do equal zero? I don't understand what the fuck you mean by that. <laughs> no associated values are defined for this num. I remember actually defining... Is it broken something? In enum name int value p what are you talking about? What, what is this? What? Okay, so I suppose I have to read something. I remember actually not having any issues with that. So something with C3. Uh and the error is not helpful. Like what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Bro, how are we supposed to compete with Zig with that? So, uh, unions, enums, okay. Um, how do I assign specific values on enums? Mm. How do I assign specific values? I don't fucking understand this. Is there an example? Examples! Uh, right, no examples. I don't see. So, you can't put equals in here, apparently. You You just can't do that. Uh, wrong doc page. Well, I mean, I search for enum and it's useless. Okay. All right. All right. Did they introduce that recently or... What the fuck am I looking at? Like, what? What? I don't remember that. Is that a recent thing? Okay, so I mean, if, if that's what you need it in here, right, so let's do value, uh, right, and is, is, is that it? Is that how I do that? Um, so, oh yeah, it has to be, so there's a description. Hmm. I, I really need to read that. So it's possible to associate each enum value with one or more static values, okay. Multiple static values can be associated with the enum. Oh. Ooh. Ah, I see what it means. So you don't have to create separate arrays. Just, okay. That That's a weird take on that. But I mean, okay. I see. I see what's going on in here. I see. I see. I see. So the internal one is going to be integer, right? So, so then later I can do shit like, uh, you know, like value. Yeah, I, I see what it means. Yeah. So um, maybe it would make sense to actually call it code. Huh. Okay. So it, was it always like that, or is that a recent? I think. I think. I don't know. Maybe I never used it, so that's why I didn't know about that. All right. So. Okay, so we ported first type in here, which is kind of cool, isn't it? So we have an opcode name, and it's exactly... Aha! So it's an opcode name. I don't think we need that. Right, so this is purely for logging. Uh, and honestly, I can actually put that shit in here. Alright, so I didn't think we... Yeah... Yeah, I don't think we need that. But maybe, yeah, so as soon as I need that, I think I can do something about it. So the opcode name is literally a hack specifically for uh, for C, right? Because C is kind of is kind of stupid in that regard. Okay, so there is a function is control, uh, which checks whether it's a control opcode. Uh, all right, I can actually port that thing in here. Why not? And what's funny is that I can uh, make it a method. Uh, CWS opcode is control. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I can just do value, maybe code, code. So now I mean, it's just opcode, yeah. Uh, right, so you can have methods and uh, yeah, that's actually going to be convenient because then if you have a code, you will be able to easily check is it control? 
is it control right all right let's try to rebuild this entire thing and uh yeah expected variable name aha uh -huh. so because we have to put a fan in here uh okay cool so that seems to be working we're slowly uh porting some of the things is control all right the next one is the frame finally finally we have a frame uh, so this is a specific frame uh, uh so it's a boolean whether it's a fin or not fin i don't remember so there is like a yeah i don't remember what fin means actually does anybody know but anyway so uh we have uh this kind of thing which is cw op code uh and yeah so we use it as an integer um okay so this is a uint uh, 64 and here is the char so interestingly we're using this as um mm -hmm, as a point so this particular frame acts like uh, a view on the payload rather than being the actual payload ha huh. very interesting actually so it is a view on payload rather than actual payload but in case of c it would just make more sense to you know have payload to be flexible array member uh like this but it's a completely different paradigm like if we just do it like that the old code all code that we have in there is going to break so it's better to follow the the same paradigm in here honestly i think it's, it's better to follow the same paradigm uh right so this is the frame essentially this is a single frame and uh yeah let's try to compile this entire thing and it does in fact compile cool so then also we have a message right but it's just a forward declaration for the message uh -huh. so message chunk specifically mm -hmm. interesting so we have frames and we also have messages and chunks and stuff like that huh that's very interesting so i have a separation between messages because messages can be messages can be split in chunks oh Huh. That's very interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. But anyway, so let's actually introduce the message kind. Uh, all right, the message kind. So this is enumeration, and uh, so the actual value in here. So message. So we see that yes, message kind. Let's put it in here. Uh, so I suppose this is also going to be something like a code, uh, right? And we're just associating that code uh, like this. All right. So what do we have in here? And uh, so maybe I have to do something like this then. Can I associate things like that? Uh, was not found. Opcode. Aha. All right. CWS opcode. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is actually kind of cool. Speaking of prefixing things, since it's already kind of prefixed with CWS of code, maybe I can actually nuke uh, this entire thing. Right, it's not needed anymore because this thing already acts like a prefix. Uh, right, so it already acts like a prefix, so I can get rid of this stuff. Uh huh. So CWS opcode, and then, and it's probably going to be the same with CWS message kind. Uh, I can just nuke this entire thing, and overall it becomes like more concise. Right. I don't remember what's the difference between messages and frames. I feel like so message is, can be actually several frames, right? So if the message is too long; it can be split into several frames. So that's how it works, I think. Uh, right, and I think frames actually indicate that, yeah, so, yeah, I think if you have a message that is split into several frames, you have frames that is text, then you have a frame that is continue, uh, 
uh, which continues the message and continue, continue. And some of them, I think, is going to be either close or maybe continue with fin. So, yeah, so here is the Boolean fin. So, and that constitutes a message. Right. So, in, in WebSocket, message is a sequence of frames. Right. And so, text denotes the type of the message, whether it's a text message or bin message. And then, special frames with a count, fucking count, uh, kind continue that message until the last one has a fin set to true. I think I slowly started to remember how it works. Just by going through the code, I'm slowly kind of like starting to remember how it works. So it's actually kind of cool. Fucking cunt! Uh, anyways, so, so let's actually try to reveal this entire thing and let's go back. So here's the message and these are the chunks, right? So in the chunk, uh, yeah, so you, you have like I even established like a linked list of them or something. That's kind of funny. Yeah. All right. So what we have on here is just, it's going to be just a message. Uh, but at the same time, I think the first thing I need to do is this one. So the reason why I was doing all of this forward declaration of the message chunk is because I was making a linked list in C. Right. So when you make a list a linked list in C, it's always pain in the ass because you know, uh, right, so the, f the thing that you use has to be declared before you can use that, so you have to have the whole concept of forward declaration, so it's usually pain in the ass, because C is an old ass language. It's an old ass language, and I suppose in C3 you don't have that problem at all, right, so if you want to have a linked list like that, a self-referential type, you can just have it. You can just have it. Who said you can't have it? You can have it if you want to. Uh, right, and anyway, so this is the message chunk, message chungus, and uh, right, so we're going to be just defining it like that, like that, like that, like that, and doesn't fucking compile, mate. So this is because it's a uint, if I'm not mistaken, right, so this is just a uint, and this one is just a char, right, char is a byte, and it compiles. Look at that. Who needs LLMs to convert one uh, language into another one? You can just go and convert it manually. It's not that hard. Guys, programming is not that hard. You don't need artificial intelligence. So we also have some errors. And by the way, this fits perfectly into C3 concept of faults, doesn't it? I think it does, right? So there is a concept of faults, right? And exceptions and stuff like that. Uh, all right, where is it? In num fault values, yeah, yeah. So here is the fault. Like, I wonder, like, why there is two. Um, yeah, so this is a standard fault, but anyway, so the faults are basically enumerations that you can return as errors, that's what they are, right? So this is a fault, uh, and I, I suppose, oh, with this is because it's C, uh. Right, so let me copy paste this entire stuff, and this is a fault CWS error. Right, so that's what it is. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, we can probably get rid of this stuff. And no error is kind of a stupid concept, right? So yeah, it's it's not a problem that it should be in here, honestly. Uh, right, so we can have client handshake error, we can have socket error, allocator error server close error and i'm not sure if i do care about allocator error so but this is one of the errors that we want to put in here um okay so and here's a bunch of other things uh right so and this is something that we can probably implement as an interface unironically 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 or i'm sorry if it was too loud we can use a fucking generic can't we? Can we use fucking generics with uh, interfaces and shit? Right, because I want to create an interface like a socket. Holy fuck. So, and then I can like have read and write and stuff like that. And we can even get rid of alloc and free because we can just use the standard allocator. And yeah, so essentially, if you need a different allocator, you can simply just set it globally in the context or whatever. 
Uh, so holy fucking shit, my friend, I'm gonna fucking coom. I'm gonna fucking coom right now. Oh. <laughs> Don't fucking clip that. <clears throat> if you clip that, I'm gonna ban you. So, and yeah, that's about it. So because of that, uh, we won't even need to create such overcomplicated shice in here. Uh, right, so did we lose... It was a bunch of frames. I think we went down a little bit, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I think everything's fine. Uh, that's actually kind of cool. Okay, so let me try some shice. Shice, shice, shice. So essentially what I can say is just like a socket, right? So le socket. Um, yeah. Let me read how to use interfaces. Interfaces. Uh -huh. Essential error handling. Mm, did I spell interfaces in Korea? Oh, interfaces. Yeah, interfaces. All right, let's go. Most statically typed objectary. Don't don't say swear words in front of me, please. Most statically typed objectary in languages implements extensively using V tables in C and. Uh, by extension C3, this is possible to emulate by passing around structs. Well, this is efficient uh, and best solution, but put certain assumption the code. Uh, I don't want to read that. I'm sorry. I don't care. Um, so what I'm just thinking is that maybe it doesn't fucking matter. Maybe what I can do is just like use the socket i suppose use the socket uh right if i need to read something i can just do something like yeah so here is my function it will just accept socket by pointer which is generic right as you can see generic uh, and then i can do probably something like socket read i think i can just do this kind of stuff Right, I think I can just do it. So I think I can look up for examples of what I want. Uh, something like that is already happening in hash table implementation because hash tables accept keys that has to be hashable. So that means keys in a hash table have to implement some sort of an interface uh, statically, not dynamically with V tables and some other shit, right? So statically. Let's look at the hash table implementation in the standard C3 library and see how exactly it does that. Because I do remember it does that because the, um, the keys must have a hash method. Is there any way you explicitly declare that? So uh, let's see. So here's the hash map. Uh, so here's the key, right? So, and they don't really specify any particular interface in here, as you can see. So hash, uh, okay. So here's the key. And they just call hash on a key. They don't really declare that key has anything, right? So they just use it. Fair, I guess. So, and I suppose it's just inferred then. Um, Okay, so we can even test if it's possible, right? So I can just define function like that and try to compile my entire thing. So uh, expected semicolon. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Right, so essentially you can just use function. You don't have to declare it anywhere. You can just use it. Okay, so if I now okay, so let's try to use that then. Um, so in example, I already imported CW3, so that means if I try to call my function, uh, so I, I have some sort of a socket for instance, right? So it's going to be SD69, right? So and I pass it in here by pointer, right? So what is going to happen? Uh, all right, so my function cannot be found, oh yeah, it has to be C3WS. Uh huh. Is it generic module? Uh, I need to specify that my socket is actually uint. Uh, right, there is no member re. That's pretty cool. So yeah, 
I was trying to use uint as the socket type and it told me it doesn't have read purely on the basis that I just tried to use read in here. I don't even have to declare it or anything. It's just like you can just use it like in templates. Not bad, I guess. I guess not bad. And I suppose I can actually define it like this, right? So you int uh, read. Uh, so and we can have self uh, and just like you know print and uh, read uh, maybe even fn d like so I mean it's already fn it already has uh, stuff in here and it compiles and if I run it uh, it works read missing okay <laughs> oh because okay okay. Uh, let's try to rebuild this entire thing and let's try to run it one more time. Okay, read 69. Cool. That, that is very convenient. Like, honestly, this library is going to be much more convenient to use than in C. Right, if we manage to implement all of that. Okay, I like that. I like that. So, it's all coming together. Uh, it's all coming together. So, uh, let's go back into the C stuff. So, we don't really need any of that stuff. So, error is going to be returned through the return values anyway. Uh, socket, read, write, we're going to be passing it as is. Allocators, we're going to be using the standard allocators to understand library. So, because of the features of C3, we don't even need this structure at all. Like, completely. Okay? Uh, right. Missing is an interesting idea. Uh, idea for missing printf uh, arguments. This is actually was taken from Golang. Um, so, Lerner just like, I think Lerner doesn't have time to implement like a proper compile time checking for printfs. Uh, we discussed that with him a little bit and uh, this is basically like a temporary solution for now. Just if you didn't provide, uh, just scream at the user that something is missing. And it's fine because, like, Go does that, right? So it's not an ideal solution, honestly. Uh, I think, a, like, a proper la uh, language would just check all of that at compile time. Even C, that by standard doesn't really need to check that. Uh, the compilers still check at compile time. Right, so I think in 2024 it has to be checked. But I think in C3 eventually there will be compile time check for these kind of things. Um, right, anyway, so the time has come to implement a uh, client handshake. Right, so let's go ahead and implement that. Uh, right, so the client handshake function, so this is the function that you have to call. And what is int in here? Int is just an indication of an error. Okay, so that means what we're going to be returning in here, we're going to be returning void with a potential error. And that's what it is, with a potential error. So here, um, we don't have to prefix it, right? So this is just a client handshake. Uh, but we are going to accept socket, right? We're going to be accepting socket. And let's actually do something like this. So we'll also accept host. Uh, host is going to be used in a handshake. So it may look like a HTTP header, but this is not an HTTP header. This is a WebSocket handshake. Handshake in WebSockets is intentionally made to look like um, HTTP header, so it is compatible with the current HTTP protocol. So it's not really HTTP header, it's just a handshake of WebSocket that looks like HTTP header. I'm not even fucking joking, like that, that's literally it. Um, so anyway, uh, what are we doing in here? So here we do all of that error stuff, right? So since we have a proper error handling in this language, we don't have to do that. So here's the handshake. Uh, and we use this thing as a sort of a, like a string builder, but we don't have to do that because we have proper string builders in the standard C3 library. So let's actually see. I don't remember how to do that. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a core C, uh, maybe string. Uh, is there something like builder? Uh -huh. String. 
How is it called within the remember? D string. I think it's called D string. Dynamic string. Yeah boy. D string, yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna replace it with D string. Uh so something like that. Uh and uh temp with capacity. So new capacity and we creating so you're supposed to use new in here i'm not really sure if you're supposed to use new in here can i just like append some stuff in there mm. all right maybe print f uh oh you can append f all right so hand shake append mm -hmm. all right so yeah, that's it. Customize resource pass. Uh -huh. Interestingly, by the way, we can basically split all of that into separate things. Uh -huh. For instance, handshake append like so. But for this one is going to be append, and this is going to be host. And let's actually make host string. Sound good to me? Uh, right, and we don't even have to do that stuff anymore. So after that, we can just do... That was bizarre. Handshake append. All right, look at that, look at that. More or less. Uh, so it's just HTTP and not uh, not really HTTP. Ah, okay. Whatever. Um, so what do we have? So we have a string. And I suppose I should be able to take a view of this thing. So it's a str view. Um, maybe the way we're going to be doing all of that is we're gonna take the socket and we're gonna write um, you know string to that right we can just try to write str view so because in the right method we were uh, in the right method we were accepting pointer to the buffer and the size of the buffer uh, but string view, it already contains pointer and the size, so we can just pass the string view in there. Uh, all right, that's pretty cool. So, and in here, what do we do? So the server handshake is literally ignored right now. We're making this assumption. The server sent the successful handshake. Nothing is sent after the handshake, so we can distinguish the frames. Uh, the frames, the handshake fits into size. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. Um, it's a very interesting assumption, honestly. So we read this thing. We so the size is less than two. Oh, if it less size is less than two, then that. And at the end, we don't have slash r slash n. In that case, we say it's a client handshake error. Okay, makes sense, I suppose. Uh, actually, makes sense. So the way we can do that, chat, we can probably read also into the uh, into this buffer, right? And it also will return the size. We can do all of these checks as well, but instead of doing it like that, we just return the handshake error right so uh, like this and the rest of this stuff is just we don't do anything um yeah that's about it so but uh-huh where is the fault where is the fault mm -hmm. cws cws uh, error handshake error Okay, so let's see if we can uh, compile the entire thing. Size T. Okay, so it doesn't like size T. Uh, this one is going to be, I suppose... Oh, we don't even need that shit. This is... Okay. 
so it's compilable. This thing is in fact compilable. Compilable. Pretty cool. Uh, so we ported the handshake. Uh, the next one, the next thing, Imagingi. Uh -huh, so here, where is the hand? Okay, so send message. So there's this function which sends a message, given the socket, message kind, payload, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting that it's actually sort of like a spread in here, uh, but I'm not sure. All right, so send message. Mm -hmm. So there is some sort of error in here. Um, excuse me. Mm -mm. So and send message is actually uh, depends on send frame. So maybe the thing we have to implement first is send frame rather than send message. So let's actually see. So when we send in a frame, uh, oh, this is a lot of byte fuckery. Yeah, I really like that. A lot of byte fuckery. Mm. So, yeah, so opcode whether it's fin or not, uh, just send in the frame. Okay, so this is uh, WebSocket protocol, by the way. Actually, WebSocket protocol. Uh, I remember a long time ago, I actually spent a lot of time just figuring out all of that stuff, and the format in RFC was kind of an ass, but uh, we still managed to implement it anyway. Uh, we still managed to implement it anyway. So what I need to do, I just need to translate that to C3. Hopefully it's not going to take, you know, too much time. So we use integers as an indicator of an error, right? So that means we can just do void this, and this is going to be fn. So this one is just a socket, right? So this is just a socket. Um, but how we actually passing it do we have to pass it by a pointer i have a feeling that we don't really have to pass it by a pointer right so it's just suck uh so boolean opcode this one is you you can't see that much but this is a payload uh maybe instead of that i just have to do char payload yeah look at that this looks good honestly this looks good so because of that cws frame right since we're sending the frame maybe the payload in here also have to be something like char payload to combine together these two things right so frame is just fin uh, or not fin uh, and again fin i think just denotes the end of the message right because the message can be split into several frames then opcode and the payload which is a slice all right, so this go coming together really nicely. I really like, it. I really like that. Okay, we don't need that. Um, so one of the things I probably want to do is uh, query replace u int eight t with just char. All right, we're replacing all of this thing with just char. So whether it's fin or not, uh, so data we just set the bytes for the data. Uh, okay. Hmm. So CWS, uh, so this is going to be socket. You know what? So in the code everywhere, I use the name CWS. And what I effectively end up doing is replacing CWS name with socket. Uh, so isn't it easier to just like maybe call the socket CWS then, right? So then in the code, I have to do less replacement. One of the, thing, one of the replacement I have to do, I have to replace all of the arrows with dots. It's not that difficult, right? So I can do that, um, right? So and in here, let's actually use CWS in here. So it will just make the translation of the code just a little bit easier, uh, right? So it's going to be socket, ooh, oh, whatever. So we can go through the completion errors then later. All right. So when I'm writing the shice, uh, so I'm using data as a slice. Is there any way in C3, if the function accepts a slice, just take a pointer? I think there is a way to do that. Or maybe some, is that how you do that? Holy shit, this, this is genius. Okay, okay. <laughs> 
I have a variable in the stack. I take a pointer, and since you can use pointers as slices, uh, char implicitly casts to char. Uh, but no, I, I have a pointer, and I have to do the other way around, Siphon. I have to do, no, from pointer to uh, the slice, not the other way around. Um, so, yeah. That's what I have to do. But I would like to maybe check uh, this kind of thing first. Um, so let me comment out this entire thing. And I'm going to rebuild it. It seems to be rebuilding. Uh, I want to take the char data and I want to put 69 there. So then uh, I can do slice. If I take the... Uh, so this is a slice. If I try to do something like this, it's not going to compile. But then... I should be able to do something like that. And it does in fact compile. Can I get rid of this thing? Fuck, I can't. So, and can I now just print that specific slice? Uh, right, I probably have to now run example. And it's empty, so does it have to be one? So, this thing is exclusive. Do I understand correctly that this thing is exclusive? Right, so it has to be like plus one. Uh -huh. All right. So that is understandable. Um, all right, so let's uncomment this entire thing. Mm, so, and this is going to be one. So this is one. If... Mm. Oh, right can fail, by the way. Right can fail. Uh, which means that one of the things we want to do, we can just propagate that then. Yeah. So how do you propagate that, yeah, the, the failures? I suppose you propagate them by doing something like this. Right. Mm -mm. So, colon specifying the slide. Ah, okay. This is exactly what I need. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, right. So, it, that means it's exactly what I need. Um, okay. Wait a second. Does that mean the whole thing becomes shorter? Look at that. Cool. Fin is always set. I really like this code. I really, really like this bit. Um, okay, next one. Mm -mm. So maybe in here, uh, we want to uh, go to the completion errors. Uh, so what's the what's the error in here? Uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is another right. So payload length, we don't really have payload length, but I suppose one of the things we can do, we can do payload length payload dot len boom 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 well, that's a lot of things right uh-huh so and in here we just do that and since write can return an error we'll just do that ah uh -huh. but this yet another case of just doing this thing right isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's just that. And we don't even have to do it like that. So do we need to reverse the bytes? Yeah. Hmm. It's not really funny, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So if the size is less than that, yeah, so there is a very interesting, uh, very interesting technique in here is that the amount of memory that is allocated for the size of the payload scales as the size of the payload increases if you see so the size of the payload is less than 126 that means we use one byte to encode the size of the payload if it's bigger we're starting to use more bytes in there so now we're starting to use two of them if it's even bigger we're using 64 bits in here right because usually when you have a binary protocol right so you have uh, a little bit of a bytes allocated for the size and then the size of the payload right 
WebSocket just scales that size depending on the size. Right, if the message is very small, uh, it's going to take only one byte to encode that size. If it's bigger, it's going to be two bytes up to 64. Right, so I think there's only three gradations in here, right? Length is less than 126, less than uh, the size of the short, which is two bytes, and less than, uh, and bigger than that is always 64. Uh, right, that's pretty cool. That, that is actually pretty cool. And it's, all of that is explained in that RFC. Uh, right, so I kind of vaguely remember actually going through all of that. Uh, that's really, it, it is really nice. So there's an entire like a you know chapter dedicated to like encoding scheme uh, of this thing. So yeah, um, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <clears throat> so what else do we have in here? U int max. U int max. <sighs> mm -hmm. So it complains about this thing so this thing is very easy to fix uh, it is very easy to fix what we do is just that uh, mm -mm. so but it's always like a, if it's less or equal than huh. well I mean yeah that makes sense right so if you read equal to zero if you read zero bytes that means it's an error that makes sense mm -mm. So the uh, the value of the first byte 125 or 26 or 27. Yeah, I guess. Um, all right. So let's do that. It's going to be date and zero one. There we go. So and we can get rid of that thing. It's only that. Uh -huh. So yeah, we're masking it like that. Huh. Wait a second. If I try to take a look at 126 in binary aha uh -huh. interesting and there is only if you take a look at the length minus two is seven uh-huh is it even correct maybe maybe i actually made some mistake but maybe that's fine anyways so here's the length and then we are writing that length uh, okay so this is that uh huh, and uh, yeah, something like this. <clears throat> so we take a pointer, and uh, yep, 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 yep. Uh, length two because length has to be uh, in here. Ah, so now it's complaining about 64 bits. It doesn't complain about this thing. Uh, I don't know where the limits are in in c3 is there any information about the limits uh limiting length um limits of specifically of the primitive types like integers and stuff like that i remember it was somewhere uh unit max I, okay i see and i suppose this is in that case it's a short right so it's a short max you can do unit max okay uh right and this one is uh short max you long max you mm. sure think but i mean short and you short has have the same size anyway so let me we can use you short for for the consistency with, with the existing code uh with the sql i mean uh all right so here we do data we first write data ah it's just an indicator of the thing that we're writing in there so which is just one byte uh-huh then we write in the length and yeah that's about it All right so this one is going to be just zero one let's get rid of that uh, let's get rid of that mm -hmm. is this and then we're writing length. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's very good. I really like how it becomes shorter. It's just like, yeah, it's pretty cool. So there's some sort of masking in here. Oh, oh, oof, oof. Randomness. Fuck. Oh, man. 
I remember that. Bro. There is a random masking of the messages. And I don't exactly remember, but it's for some sort of security reasons. I remember it fascinated me at the time. Like, what the fuck? I need to, I need to know that. So there is some sort of like a measure uh, against something, but I don't remember what it is. Masking. Client to server masking. Um, so a mask must be... The masking key is contained completely. The masking... Uh huh. It's something about security considerations. Uh, okay, mask. I can masking attack on infrastructure. Yeah, let's actually read that. So, in addition to endpoints being the target of attack via web sockets, other parts of web infrastructure, such as proxies, may be subject to attack. This protocol was being developed and experimental was conducted to demonstrate a class of attack and proxies that led to poisoning of caching proxies deploy, deployed in the wild. The general form of the attack was to establish a connection to a server under the attacker's control, perform an upgrade on HTTP connection similar to what WebSocket protocol does to establish a connection and subsequently send data over the upgraded connection that looked like GET request for specific known resource, which uh, uh, which in an attack would likely be something like a widely deployed script for attacking hits or resources on an ad server network. So essentially the idea is um, you establish WebSocket connection, right? And then uh, over that WebSocket connection, you are sending data that looks like HTTP which triggers some of the HTTP proxies or something like that. So for that not to happen, they are masking messages with random masks. So even if you send something that looks like HTTP request, it's still going to be, you know, a little, a little bit garbled up. Right. So to prevent this kind of attack, like I don't remember the details and like you need to read the entire thing in here, but it's kind of a fascinating thing. So, and this is like a part of the WebSocket protocol. Uh, yeah, is it like a simple ZOR or something? Just like scramble up a little bit, right? So, you, so then you, you can't send a sequence of bytes that looks like HTTP or something. Um, so to not like confuse the proxies and anything. Uh, yes, with the four bytes key. So it's kind of cool that I'm going through all of that and kind of remembering all of that. Right, so and you, you just need to generate like a random mask in here. Um, but anyway, so so this is a USC. Uh, so there's a four of them. Um, yep, yep, yep. I wonder if I can just do something funny, like for each. Uh, so it's going to be byte for the mask. And for each byte, we're just... Uh, generating random shit so we can do something like this like for each um you know byte maybe even like that um yep something like this and then we're sending the mask uh sending the mask mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so what else do we have in here so it didn't uh, looks like the beginning of the declaration. Uh huh. 126. So let's actually move that stuff in here. Mm -hmm. uh, 142. And we're almost there. Almost there. The last thing. Uh, so mask the payload and send it mask the payload and send it okay so we're iterating while i why did why didn't i use for loop in here excuse me it's kind of weird but i mean i could have just done something like for uh you int i equals zero and uh, just like go through that I really understand that uh so i don't have to do plus one in here right so because i do it in here but still um okay so here's the some sort of a chunk 
All right, so this is the chunk. And okay, so I'm masking the chunk. Uh, chunks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that in a separate buffer so to not uh, damage the pay the data that was actually passed to this function. That's what's going on in here. Okay. Uh, right. And as soon as it's there. Okay. That I guess that makes sense to some extent. Okay. So and then in here, I just do something like this. So it's going to be chunk starting from zero. And it's going to be chunk size. All right. And obviously it can fail like that. All right. And in here we can just return. All right. So that's the entirety of the function. Uh, of course, it doesn't like this kind of thing. Uh, so it's going to be u int. Okay. We just ported all of this byte fuckery to C3 and it's actually made it more readable and more concise and stuff like that. I, I don't think we need this kind of thing anymore. Uh, right, so uh, this one is fine. So the mask, yeah. All right. So I, I don't really know if, if I made any mistakes in here, but I hope I didn't make any mistakes. Uh, if I did, it's going to be pain in the ass to debug, honestly, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Mm, so, all right. So I think this is the most difficult function in the entirety of the library. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. And after that, it's going to be a breathe. So now we should be able to send the message. But before the, we send the message, I think I need to make a small break, right? So because I'm streaming for almost an hour, uh, and I would like to refill my cup of tea. So I think the time has come to refill a cup of tea. So, um, all right, we're back. Uh, since I already ported the send frame message, I can actually start working on send message, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and try to port that in specific. Um, so what we're doing here, we accept the socket, right? So this is going to be socket. Uh -huh. This is the message kind. Uh, and this is the payload, and I suppose payload is going to be just something like this. Uh -huh. And what is a chunk length? So it's I suppose it's when we're splitting the message into chunks. I'm, I'm not really sure what it is. I, I suppose we're going to figure it out as we go through the code. Uh, all right. So here we are. Hmm. So we are actually updating payload length. Uh -huh. So, but maybe this is something that we, we can do as well. Why not? All right. So I'm saving the um, payload length. And if the, and if that length is bigger than chunk length, uh, we're actually sending the chunk length. All right. Um, so, and then we're sending the frame. Ooh, this one is interesting. Right, so this is the socket. We're sending the frame. Um, so, aha, it's, um, all right, I think I understand what it means. So, we have a huge ass message, right? We have a huge ass message. Uh, and what we do, we say, okay, Split that message into the chunks of a certain size. I wonder if I can do something like this, right? So split it into chunks of a certain size, uh, right? And send those chunks as separate frames and also correctly marks them as, you know, text or continue and also mark the fin uh, frame. So that's basically what this function does. You just give it a huge ass payload and then the size of the chunks and it correctly splits everything into the frames of those sizes and correctly marks the frames of needed types and stuff like that. So this is what this function does. That's actually kind of cool. This is actually kind of convenient. So that's a really smart way of implementing this function, if I do say so myself. <laughs> uh, right. So, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. 
All right, so here's the chunk and what we're sending in here. So uh, this thing uh, sent frame, right? So it identifies whether it's fin or not. And the way it identifies whether it's fin or not by taking the whole payload length, right? Subtracting uh, the payload length and length. And if it's equal to zero, that means, okay, it's fin. Uh, right, and it can actually... Mm hmm so here is the payload length if it's bigger that's the length if it's smaller or equal that means it stays the same is that even correct i'm not even sure that's the correct way of doing that but whatever right if this is the first frame right if this is the first frame what we're doing we're just using the kind that is sent in here. That's what we're doing. We're just using the kind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Otherwise, we do something else. Otherwise, it's this one. And then this is the payload length, but this is actually payload zero of that specific length. So that's how it goes. And what we're doing essentially we're just propagating an error from that specific function aha uh -huh. and then we're chopping off that chunk from the payload the way we can do that actually is by doing something like um can i do len and just take the rest of the thing is that or maybe something like that right so starting from the length up until like the the end of this thing is that something i can do i think i should be able to do it like that i think it makes sense and and after that we just return it as usual damn i really like how it just like simplifies everything like what the fuck so it's probably not going to compile because like i don't really know how to properly do this thing uh all right but maybe i can can do something about that Okay, so looks like a beginning of the function. Yeah, I forgot to put fn in here. Uh -huh. Are you okay? So yeah, so it has to be something like this. I need more T. Uh, just a second. And um, after that... Oh, this motherfucker just compiles. Hmm. Hmm. Just because I just take that and... Okay. So that means I can. Will it actually work though? Will it actually work? Um, so I just saw go to statements, Pepper Christ. You want, you want to see something scary? Do you know what the fuck is Nginx? Do, do you know what is Nginx? This is a web server that is powering the internet. There's a lot of uh, web servers running this thing. Let's take a look at the source code of Nginx. Let's take a look at the code, source code of Nginx. I think it's going to be interesting. Um, So search go to this is code that is installed on shit ton of web servers all around the internet right fucking now and probably this is the code that actually powering this stream right fucking now. Just fucking saying. Just fucking saying. Anyways. I'm going to bed. Oh, my, my professor told me go to bed. Oh. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Anyways. Uh, the thing in here. 
go to my pools. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I, heard, I just saw on Reddit a meme that go to bed. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, I wonder... Okay, so there is an association of the type. But if I literally take this value and cast it to CW opcode, will it be the same? This is something that kind of worries me, honestly. It's just like, it creates association, but it's... Does it actually use these values? Like, the syntactically it implies that it kind of doesn't... It, it's weird, that's what I'm trying to say. It is kind of weird. Uh, so let me try to build this entire shit. Uh, so. And what I want to do, I want to grab this thing. Uh, where is this stuff here? It is uh, CW code. I'm going to here. And for instance, I'm taking a ping, all right? I'm taking a pink. And then I want to compare it to something like like this. Where I take that and just cast it like that. Is it gonna be true or not? Like because the whole association values is weird and makes me anxious. Uh alright, so what you don't like? Uh, CW code could not be found. Did you spell it right? I, I think so. Uh, right. Is it something that I have to explicitly uh, prefix? I remember that with the types I didn't have to explicitly prefix them. Um, module name. But I mean the types don't require explicitly prefixing them. I know about module names. But the types don't require prefixing them, don't they? Wait a freaking second. Excuse me. But I mean, oh yeah, I, I think you need the socket shit. Otherwise it just kind of doesn't work. Don't know. Why are you giving advices if you don't know? Mm. Why are you doing this? Is, uh, exceeds the number of enums in... It's exactly what I'm fucking talking about. It's not the... Ve oh my god. Fuck. This is not an actual value. Fuck. Mm, I fucking knew it. I, I fucking knew that it's gonna be some shit like that. Oh. Learn to try to debate. Like, this is actually kind of dangerous, isn't it? Because it breaks your assumptions, right? Because C works differently. Isn't it supposed to be a language? If you know C, you you understand C3. You know what to expect from C3. Where is all of that? Where is all of that? Disappear. Fucking disappeared all of a sudden. Get fucking... Okay. A new learner was trying to debate me. I fucking knew it. So, but at least... Okay, so in this specific case... Right. In this specific case... At least what we're doing, we're casting CWS. We're not even doing that. That's the weird part. That's the fucking weird part. We're not even fucking doing that. Bravsky. Ba 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 Bravsky. You know what? 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 Motherfucker still compiles. Why the fuck are you still compiling? How fucking dare you still compile? Um, I'm I'm disappointed that all of that just works, even though it's not supposed to. Um, so here is that. Dude, in, now this shit makes me extra anxious. Like, I have no idea what the fuck to expect from these enumerations. Like, why did you design it like that? It's just so fucking weird. Ugh. Okay, anyway. So. Can we... I fucking know. It's, it's like, I don't know what to expect from this shit now. 
Um, freaking extensions of C, my ass. Can I do something like that? Maybe. So in, in that case, I don't have to do this kind of thing. Um, so in that case, I can just call it opcode. So internally, so it doesn't really m probably matter how internally it is. So this is stupid that uh, you can't... Exactly, this is fucking stupid. Right, so it's like, what the fuck am I looking at? It, like, C enums work fine. Even Go tries to emulate C enums. It's just like, the way they work, it was fine. There was no need for this extra weird shit. Uh, usually people just def values, but it's annoying since you can't use enum type. Really? I, I swear to God, like, C3 is, like, overall kind of nice, but sometimes it has these weird fucking corners that just, like, mm, mm, uh, so disappointing sometimes. <sighs> so... Uh, how are we gonna be doing all that? Maybe, um, maybe I can just associate opcode. So, and the, the most annoying thing, the most annoying thing, look, I'm using CWS kind, right? I'm using CWS kind, uh, and uh, this thing accepts CWS code and it just compiles. Why the fuck does it just compiles and doesn't complain that I'm using the wrong enum? So enums are not, um, so enums are not strongly typed, uh, right? So they are not strongly typed, or maybe um, it's the this thing that is confusing this entire stuff. Why am I wasting time on all that? Like I'm literally wasting time on something that I should not waste time. Okay, who designed enums in C3? I'm disappointed, like very thoroughly fucking disappointed. Why I... So the entire association values imply that they are very strongly typed. But now they're just convert between each other, just like, like motherfuckers. Oh, I'm getting angry. I'm getting thoroughly angry, honestly. Um, so what is this? Why does it even compile? Oh, wait. This is because all of that is the... Yeah, I think I understand what's going on. Okay, okay. So this is not the problem with enumerations. This is problem with generics. None of that code is instantiated yet. Fuck. Ah, oh, this is annoying. Mm, so we never actually really compiled any of that code. This because it's ne it was never as instantiated. This is fuck. <laughs> what did they even say? <laughs> Uh, true C++ moment, exactly. We don't fucking know if all of that even, like, ever compiled. So, this is a... This is a problem, honestly. This is a problem. Anyways, so that means we need to go through examples. Um, okay, let's create some sockets. So, this is a client handshake. Um, and I wonder... Hmm. I wonder if I can... If I could make those things like, like this, is that something I could do? I feel like I, this is something that could potentially work. Um, so let me try to build. Um, so what are you talking about? So error expected the ending. Uh, really? Uh, what? What? Where am I? So example C three six. Ah. So essentially, essentially, mm, 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 mm. so if I have socket, mm, this is annoying. 
Mm, soak it, uh, soak it, you int. Maybe just int. Uh, then we do something like a fan. Uh, do we say a read? When we're using the read, obviously read can um, should return how much we read in there. So this is the socket. So this is also self. Uh, and uh, we accept the buffer, right, into which we're reading all of that. So here we're going to be uh, just returning zero for now. Um, and in here we can also do socket writes. Uh, self, but maybe we should return you int. So that means in case of reading zero, we're going to be returning end of file or something. So, and this is what we write in here. And this is how, how much we wrote. Um, but anyway, so here I can have socket CWS, which is 69, and I'm just passing this entire thing. Uh, hello. Right, so what I'm trying to do here, I'm just trying to compile the whole thing. Uh, could not be found, that's fine. Uh huh. All right, so don't forget the generic parameter module. I, why do I have to do that for the module? Really? Or do I have to do that for here? Could not be found. Did you spell it right? Client handshake. Am I... Ah because I made it like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is it going to work then? Is it going to just... There's no member client I check to end. But interestingly, it, what if I make the distinct... Right, so be, which creates like effectively a different type. Nah, you can't just do that. Uh, all right, so this is a bit annoying, but that's understandable. That's understandable. We could maybe actually create like a single wrapper out, like out of all of that. Mm. Could create a single wrapper. Um, so let's go back to just doing it like that. So it's going to be socket client and shake CWS. Uh, couldn't it be found? Did you spell it right? CWWS. Uh, generic module. Did you forget generic parameter? But do I really have to have a generic parameter in here? It's kind of a sus. Yeah, okay, so that's fine. So then here we're gonna just unwrap it. Yeah, okay, so now we're talking. Now we can see that none of that shit is compiling. Cool. All right, so yeah, okay. So we have to unwrap it like that. And then error. Did you mean the function socket in the module net OS? Aha, uh -huh. right, 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 so this has to be CWS, that's understandable. So now we're getting something to not compile. Uh, 91, uh, yeah, this one is this. Uh -huh. well, so that's pretty cool. So what's the next error? Uh, has no, uh huh, CWS, there is no handshake error. It's a client handshake error. That's right, because that's what it is. Uh huh. And now we're now we're now we it instantiated all of these things. Perfect. Uh, opcode cannot implicitly convert it to char. That's understandable, uh, right? Because it's not really opcode. It's actually code. Um, because of that, finally we're getting something right. So let's make it a char, and maybe also internally it's going to be using char. Uh, right, so what else do we have in here? So this is error, uh-huh, one, one, two. Uh, so payload length. Mm. 
So we know it's very small, that means I can very easily convert it to char. Uh huh. So what's that one? Uh huh. So this one is also really. Yeah, so I can. Do, can I convert it to char? Uh, maybe what, what I have to convert to char is this one. Uh huh. All right. So one, two, three. Uh, and now we're writing some stuff in here. Okay, that's cool. There's no field method socket. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so because we just do that. Uh -huh, 127. Mm -hmm. So this one. Char. Mm -hmm. So what's that one? Uh, too few elements to initialize. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's why it was not complaining about that run stuff. Uh, I still don't know how to use run, by the way. Uh, so, and I'm sure if I give a shit, so we're probably going to be doing all just libc. Uh, Alright, so can we just import libc or maybe std libc? Uh, just libc? Uh -huh. uh, int cannot be... Comp okay, so that's fine. We can just do something like this. So this is going to be char. Uh, size of is not okay. 156. Uh, so what size of chunk? Uh huh. Chunk is just length. Mm -hmm. Finally, fucking fi thank you. Holy shit! This is the error I was looking for. So the the problem was not enumerations. I apologize. Right. So the problem was the generics. They were not instantiated. So because of that, they were never compiled. It's a C++ template moment. Yeah, understandable. Okay, okay. Uh, you can also read for by... Bro! I already called run. It's a solved problem. It was solved five minutes ago. We already forgot about it. We already moved on. It's a solved problem. Solved problem. That's it. Conversation is over. Uh, anyways, so uh, what do we need in here? Um, people are just obsessed over random minor stuff. It's insane to me. It's why nothing gets done. Um, okay, so this is the kind, and I suppose we, what we have to do is just like a opcode. Right, so. Yeah, this is what we can do. Uh, and this one, well, 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 let's go back. So this one is just a code, and this is cont. Fucking cont, mate. Uh, yes. Can you find common parent of... Aha, uh -huh. that is understandable. So now, what I can do, I can just do opcode. Uh-huh. Opcode. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, all right, all right. So that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, op code. So I need to think how we're going to be actually approaching this entire stuff. So this is op code. Uh huh. Op code, op code. Look, can I? not provide this stuff. Can I just like make it like this? Is that something I can do? Is it going to work properly? Nah, it has to be like this. Oh, I, I can actually do that. I, can, I don't have to specify this thing. So this is opcode. Uh -huh. All right, so that's pretty cool. So you have a code that is char and then you can, this Actually, kind of makes sense. I actually kind of like it this way. Mm, I actually kind of like it this way. Mm -mm. Mm, 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 mm. Cool. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So, two, two, two. 
all right um so i suppose that's it right so maybe i should just keep this code because it makes the whole module instantiated and subsequently checks for all of these errors and stuff like that right so subsequently checks for all of these things um okay so send message right so send message is done and i suppose the next thing we need to do is well, there's this ssl read it's kind of weird it's not even used anywhere okay so uh read message I presume it depends on the read frame. Okay, so that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. It's just like a read frame. So that means the first thing we have to do, look, we have to port the read frame function first. And only then, uh, right, we can uh, do the rest of this stuff. All right, let's go. Uh, so this one, it uses integer probably for the same, the same way, right? So it's going to be void like this. So this is the socket, um, and it, yeah, so it's a point, it doesn't really matter. So here we accept the frame, uh, and we just read in the frame. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So it accepts payload, and so on and so forth. Ah, so we, we're accepting it by a point because we're going to be reading into that frame. Okay, makes sense. Um, so I forgot to call free frame before calling CW. Eh, it doesn't matter. I think the way we're going to be actually approaching the frames is we're going to be allocating the payload in a temporary buffer. I think that's how we're going to be approaching. So none of that actually matters. None of that actually matters. Um, because of that, by the way, can't we just do something like this? Yeah, just read the frame uh, from here. I think it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah, just just read it like that. And all of that, by the way, is these things. Mm -hmm. So we can even make them macros. So this is a macro. Uh, and I wonder if you, you can have like macros like this. I wonder if you can have macros like this. Okay. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So here's the header, right? So which is going to be just a char, uh, and it's so two bytes. Uh, it's just two bytes. And what we're doing in here is, let me quickly query place, uh, query place something like this, right? Uh huh. So we don't have to put that. What we can do is just something like this. Mm -hmm. cool so payload length so in here we parsing the payload length remember how we were rendering the length of this thing and now we're parsing it uh all right so we're doing sort of like a reversed process uh this one is going to be just you int um, might as well just try to compile uh, 177 so it has to be fn uh so 179 so you can't have macros in here like this right so can we then just move them up there like so uh right the name uh what a type name was expected here so I suppose you just expect this thing, uh, this thing, this thing, this thing, right? And all of the types we expect in here are just chars. Uh, they are just chars. What do you expect from me in here? Wh what am I missing? Do you want like a small name? Fucking say you want a small. What the hell is this error? Oh my, bro, bro. Oh my god, oh, freaking. Mm. Okay, so can I just put this stuff in here then? Nah, it has to be up there. Okay. 
sure, fine. Uh, error messages, I swear to God. Anyways, so here's the char, here's the length, depending on this length we do that. Um, okay, so this is the extended length. Uh -huh. Cool. And now we're just, okay, so what we're doing in here is just like a use size. Extended length, length. So payload length, extended length. Okay, so that's that's reasonable. That's what we're doing here. Uh, okay, so what do we have? Uh, so and it's gonna be something like that. Okay, so to have it use size. All right, to six. Uh huh. Uh, and obviously, I probably want to put six in here. Uh -huh. So far, so good. We're getting somewhere. Actually, getting somewhere. It would be kind of nice to confirm that we read exactly eight bytes, but I'm going to just assume that it's correct. Because that's what the C code did anyway, so maybe that's totally fine. And here we do pay load length. Yeah, so that's fine as well. All right, so uh, this thing, you int, uh, just you int. So masked, uh huh. If masked, we read the mask. Oof, but mm, okay. I remember there was actually very interesting function um, which allowed you to take a pointer to any type and view it as char view and it was something about hashing shit uh, so I remember seeing that function just a second mm, so char view or something as yeah there we go so there's this macro look at that look at this shit so you it takes a pointer to something it takes a pointer to something uh right and it basically converts that pointer to pointer to the char and then just takes a slice out of that so we can actually do that ourselves like we don't need to depend on this thing um Right, so the way we can do that is essentially I take in a pointer to the mask and then I do char and then uh, I essentially just just do something like that. Uh, so what was that? Size of yeah, size of maybe you int maybe size of mask just. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. Hmm. So if thing is masked, usually it is masked, right? Uh, so we're just reading it like that. Okay, cool. All right. So what did we get in here? So we need to rebuild the whole thing. Uh, so semicolon, obviously. Um, okay, so there's some errors. Hmm, this one is interesting. So, if we couldn't allocate something, I think I don't really care about allocation errors, right? So, because if the allocation error happened, I mean, just crash. And I think maybe allocators already do that. So, I really don't want to give a shit about that, honestly. So, how are we going to be approaching this in test stuff? Uh, so, we need to allocate the frame. We need to do mem new cws frame so and that gives us the new frame right so here's the frame uh, and we're filling up it's a either fin or opcode uh, so yeah so this is opcode fuck opcode is an actual value not the in the oh my god I hate enumerations in C3. I hate it. I hate them. Mm. 
because it's it's not like this is associated so now i need to convert between associated values oh my god oh my god this is bad it's so fucking bad why why not just have a normal enums like in c like everywhere else they worked they proven by time this is exactly what you want oh now i have to go through all of these hoops to just like oh my god okay maybe you just misunderstand them but i mean they're not the same aren't they they're not the same yes yes so oh this is annoying this is really fucking annoying oh like they, they make, it makes them useless honestly it makes enums useless uh, so annoyed Mm -mm. so i want to do that right so because i want to just mechanically go through all of the problems uh, compilation errors and just fix them and don't think about it too much now i have to think how i'm going to be restructuring the code and i want to be restructuring the code i have no time for that i have no fucking time for that bro and back to magic maybe we have to just introduce magic constants maybe that's what we have to do right it's stupid it's fucking stupid because like i mean if if the if we had enumerations like in C, if we, it would just work. It's a fucking downgrade. It's literally downgrade, not an improvement over C. Um. So, yeah, what we're we gonna be doing here? Uh, I really don't want to do. So that means I have to refactor shit ton of code for no fucking reason. Uh. Okay. So let me let me see. Annoying. Num. Num and switch. Associated. Is it possible to associate each value on each type inference? Optional types. Uh, that is such a blue bowling. Holy fuck. So this is a bit struct, so this is, this does not associate the values or anything. Oh, fuck. I'm insanely annoyed right now. Um, so, and there's, like, because sometimes you want to do an opposite thing as well. All right, so... Mm. If I'm gonna be doing this stuff, okay. So there was op code. How much code will I will I have to change in here? Is that a good idea? Okay. Mm. So I probably want you to. Maybe I could actually make them consts or something. Right, let's go through the compilation. Yes, it's fucking annoying, but it is what it is. Mm. Uh. Okay. Oh, and now you can't even easily do that. Opcode uh, CWS. Opcode is control. Uh, so it means it has to be something like that. Opcode. Uh, we could introduce like a distinct type or something. Um, yeah, distinct CWS opcode, which is a char, right? Do you do it? I don't remember if it's equal or not equal. Do you put equal on there? Uh, you probably do. Uh, and in here, maybe what we want to do is on CWS opcode. All right, so uh, 45. And in here, honestly, we can just do something like this then, can't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not char. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
35, uh, so we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, 101, we don't have to do that anymore. Uh-huh, 101. What you don't fucking like, motherfucker? What you don't fucking like, motherfucker? Okay, so I think I can just do something like this. All right, so 160, uh, 168. Uh -huh, something like this. Wasn't that bad, honestly. Um, wasn't that bad. Okay, I'm not that annoyed anymore. <laughs> it was actually easier than I thought. <laughs> Right, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, I just thought that is going to be too much work. Um, so, okay, let's work on this one. Uh, 238, okay, let's go. Uh, allocation, yeah, don't, don't care. Um, so if payload is, uh, yeah, so the payload length. Uh, let's put just payload length in here. But I mean, it doesn't freaking matter per se honestly uh the thing we can we can do yeah just if if it's empty don't do anything but in that case ah uh -huh. so the thing we can do we can actually put something like this so if it's ah uh, It's kind of bizarre, honestly, but uh, payload mem uh, new array uh, and the thing we put in here is the char and just the payload length. All right, so that's what we can do, and then we just do frame payload length. We don't need to do any allocation in here, honestly. So we set it to zero, but I mean, is that something really needed? Mm. It's not really needed, honestly. Like, why? Um, doesn't handle when read didn't read the whole payload. Fair, fair. Um, fair, fair, fair. So then we do something like that, and we just read the whole thing. Uh huh. And then we just do something like that. So we just thread the whole stuff. Right, we allocated everything. Uh, yep. And then, in case of an error, we clean everything up, but it doesn't really matter that much, honestly. So, and yeah, so the idea is that we just using the um, standard allocator. And it's going to be up to the user code to either use the temporary allocator for the current context or not. So that's kind of the idea in here. That's kind of the idea. Uh, all right. So what do we have in here? And it's all this, yeah, payload len. Let's uh, replace that stuff with that stuff. Uh, what else? It's... Um, uh, only macros function pointers may be involved. This is you int type browser. Why are you going fucking crazy? Like what? Um, only macros functions and function pointer may be invoked. This is Oh Baravsky. How do you fucking use macros? Show me how the fuck you use macros. Okay. What about the ones with the arrow shit? Yeah, okay, so that, that's how you call them. You need it twice, it's a variable. You have it twice, it's a variable. You have it... Ah, and I can't call it capital letters because it's a macro and macro cannot be capital letters. Did I understand that correctly? Oh, 
<coughs> okay. Uh, freaking. Okay. You know what, learner? I I'm really gonna be doing it like that. <laughs> Why are you so authoritarian? Why don't you just fucking allow me to call my macros variables and types however the fuck I want? Why does it have to be this shit? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing it like that to annoy you, learner. You designed this. You designed this. This is the consequences of your decisions. Now live with them. Continue living in the cursed world you create. You created the cursed world we're living in. And I'm going to be programming like that. That's it. So don't blame me. Anyways, uh, so that's the price of being authoritarian when it comes to naming. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, all right. Fuck, why am I... Re okay, I renamed too much. <laughs> Just a second. Okay. Uh, so, what else do we have in here? So, there's too few elements. Uh, 94. 94. Okay, so this is that. Uh, that's the correct way to name macros. Exactly. That's that's the correct way to name macros. Uh, all right. So, I'm going to 98. Um, payload length why did i put dot in here wait stupid or something how how did it okay wait a second cw where's cws um did i accidentally put that stuff so pay load so it was case 126 yeah i think i'm i am stupid all right all right okay two three you you, you guys are too funny <laughs> okay then. <clears throat> I mean, that's c3 for you what can I say uh but i mean i so i'm experiencing experiencing sunk cost fallacy <laughs> with c3 right now uh sucking cox fallacy that's what i experienced <laughs> I'm, i feel like i'm sucking cox anyway <clears throat> um so what else do we have in here so char but it's explicitly bully ah okay so this is a mask um i suppose okay so it's uh not equal zero right that's what we want to do or maybe we can just like cast this entire stuff to do um so okay to 23 so we're just reading that look at that look at that beautiful code who was talking about introducing as slice to get rid of the hack what do you think about this code now what do you think about this one? <laughs> uh, this one is much better in my opinion, honestly. Um, so, 213. Alright, so this is going to be F. Uh, this is opcode. Let's go. Uh, so, fin, it's a boolean. Alright. An opcode. Uh -huh. so, so, that was opcode. Count. All right, so missing return statement and yeah, okay. So at the end in here, we just return in that specific frame. Uh, just return the frame, just return the frame. Aha, uh -huh. I see what you did there, my friend. All right, yep. Very cool. So we got the uh, read frames or whatnot. So everything seems to be fine so far. 
Uh, okay, the next function, function, read a message, right? So we just need to port this function. You forgot to call, well, we don't care. Uh, so reading the message, reading the message. So if then, when I'm reading the message, I suppose we're gonna do CWS message, All right? So this is the message and I suppose it's also going to be a pointer and also may result in an error. This is the socket and this is that. We don't care about that, we don't care about that. So CWS message chunk is one of these things and this is the pointer. So we're going to be basically constructing, basically constructing the... Oh boy, uh, the frames and shit. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Mm. so this is the frame maybe i don't care uh, give a shit about that but uh so this is going to be the point uh and stuff like that right okay so when we uh, again message is something that can be split into frames so we're reading the frames essentially all right um i guess that's what's going on Hmm, this one is interesting, actually. Because when do we stop? Uh, when do we stop? I feel like we never probably stop. Holy shit, that's a lot of code, honestly. Damn. All right. Uh... We should probably step when we encounter the fin um, frame. Non, yeah, non fin continuation. And this is basically where we break. Uh, so I feel like this red zero is purely in case of errors. And because of that, it doesn't really matter that much. Right? So it just doesn't really matter. So ah, wh while we, th there's no problem in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. While there's no problem. How can we even do that? While try. Yeah, this is what we can do. Yeah, so, okay. I think this is how you can do C3. C3 is a marvelous language. Look at that. It's, it's a cool language. You can do shit like that. So while... <laughs> it's a cool language, trust me. Um... Okay, so we have opcode, we take the frame control, uh, yeah, opcode, opcode. Uh, so, and in case if it's, uh, if we get opcode close, what we do, we essentially return uh, solver close arrow, CWS arrow, uh, solver close arrow. That's what we do. All right. So now we have this. Um, so then we are reading the. So there is a thing about the pings. Uh, all right. So we send the frame. Yeah. If we receive ping, we send pong. With the same payload, if I understand correctly. So that's basically what it's all about. Uh, right, that's what it's so about. So it's just a frame payload. We can just do frame payload and simply like that. And then break. Okay. Ignore any other control frames for now. Fair, fair. Don't have to clean anything, just, you know, shit into the memory. Nobody cares. Okay. Read message does not verify the message starts with non-cont frames. Does, uh, okay, so we have a lot of assumptions in here, actually. Okay, so we're allocating some stuff. I suppose we're allocating chunks. We're allocating chunks. So if n is equal to null, uh, what we're doing, we just allocate mem a look. A look! And what we're allocating is just, what is the end? Um, 
It's a chunk. Okay. So I'm just allocating that. We don't need any of that shit. Any of that shit. Fuck all of that shit. Though we can do something like mem clear. Uh, I think it just cleans the whole... Nah, it doesn't. Right, so then within this one, we set the payload to the frame payload. We don't even have to do it like that. It's a frame payload. Alright. So and then for the message chunk... Uh, let me take a look at the definition of the message chunk. It's just... A, it's It can be just payload. Yeah, so there's only two things in here. So it's just that payload, frame payload. Um, yeah. We can set its next into null for now. For now. Okay, so then we do the message chunks and message kind. It's the same inam shit again. Fucking same inam shit again. I guess we have to do it fucking again. I, I don't fucking know. The, the same, but for, for those you know for message kinds now so i have to do something like distinct distinct uh which is going to be just char right so and then um you know we're going to have something like cws message text and all of these things will be const uh const cws message kind but we just do opcodes with this stuff yeah, again, exactly. Eggs, fucking Ackley. Eggs. Eggs. All right, so what do we have in here? We can have a doing a similar thing. Okay, so let me get rid of all of the arrows. All of the arrows. Can, okay, so I can probably, yeah, I, I don't want to remove the, the message. I think the message is actually useful. All right, so let's put dot instead of this stuff here. What we do is mem alloc. Work, 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 work. All right, so this one is, yeah, so it's just like next. Okay. Uh, so this is next. Um, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So and next next is null and then payload is the same as payload and and next uh -huh. all right so that's basically what we're... so it's a linked list do you guys remember how to do linked lists uh yeah that's basically how we do them so the frames payload has been moved to a the frames chunk moved as in C++ moved. The ownership of the payload belongs to message. <laughs> C++ deaths right now. This is what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. I mean, it's, it's probably Rust, right? So Rust checks this kind of shit, uh, you know, at compile time. C++ doesn't check shit. Imagine documenting move semantics in C in comments. Holy fuck. So, yeah. But honestly, none of that fucking matters. Like, we don't even have to do that. Because we allocate in frames on each fucking iteration. And we're just forgetting them. Because we're going to be allocating them in a temporary arena. Which we're going to clean up on each iteration of that. So, fuck all of that. Fuck move semantic. Fuck cleaning up, fuck all of this shit. We can just shit into the heap and that's it. So, uh, all right, so what do we have in here? We we read the next frame, but we actually read it at the beginning of the loop, so fuck all of that shit as well. All right, so 
And uh, honestly, none of that shit is needed. Like all of that is gonna be automatic. Uh, so what do we have in here? Here we're supposed to just return the message, but where do we return the message? Wait a second. Uh, how do we return the message? Um, where do we locate the message? Wait a second. <laughs> okay, so let's let's. Go. <laughs> I think I think I did some fucky wacky. Um, so 278 yeah we'll probably don't need that probably don't need that yeah finally you're talking about some serious stuff okay so 45 uh so we're just gonna cast this thing to here and we can repeat that all right what do we have? Uh, so 166, so opcode uh, CWS, opcode. We don't even have to do it like that. I think, I think we can just do it like that. All right, 240. It was not even reporting all of these errors the entire fucking time, man. Man, fuck that. Scheiße, scheiße. Okay. So if it's no, whatever. Okay, so th this is exactly what I'm talking about. We need to find the message somewhere, right? We need to find the message somewhere. So how are we going to be doing all that? Ah, uh, message is just passed from here. Understandable. So CWS message, message, um, mem aluk, uh, CWS message. Uh, let me take a look at the definition of this thing. Maybe even struct CWS. Uh, so it has a kind and changas and all of that shit. Mm -hmm. Where do we do we send message kind anyway? Yeah, we do send message kind from the first one. Uh huh. But one of the things I probably want to do is actually set message to end no like so mm -hmm. but that's unclear right so here's the end how do we use the end afterwards ah i think i know it's a, it's a temporary thing that is going to be removed anyway uh, okay so I, I see what's going on so it's just like it points at the end of the linked list uh, but we don't care about it after we're done essentially okay so but uh and should be no one here anyway just in case so uh yeah so is it chunks i think it's chunks i think it's just chunks uh -huh. finally we got to this point where we can simply get rid of all of that and just return the message that we allocate hell yeah I think we ported the entire library, honestly. Um, so it's actually very simple. It's actually very simple and consists of like very few things, honestly. Uh, it really consists of very few things. So that's pretty cool. Um, how are we going to be uh, doing all of that stuff? How are we going to be doing all of that stuff? Yeah, I just want to double check that I didn't miss anything. I think everything's fine. So, yeah, the only thing you need is socket that reads and writes and, you know, a couple of functions like send message, read message, and so on and so forth. All right, let's try to port the example. Right, so we, we had an example in C, um, right? So here are the examples and we're going to be using the plain example uh-huh and uh, yeah so we're gonna be literally just porting that so we're gonna start with this thing uh right so these are the parameters that we have so this is define uh-huh just a bunch of things uh just a bunch of things all right so login the frames uh that's kind of bizarre but i mean maybe that's fine do i want to port this specific function right now maybe maybe i do 
uh, it's kind of a it's not that big of a function okay so that's fine that's fine everything's fine chat everything's fine so the way we're going to be doing all that is just uh io print f n print f n so it's just that and this is d and this is len uh query replace this thing with dot uh furthermore we can get rid of that so this is a fan uh-huh op name oh this one is oh this one is interesting actually how can i yeah we need to port op names as well i think um but do i want to do it right now maybe i do um let me see maybe a little bit later so then the payload, uh, so we are not doing the roll log. Um, yeah. So we're gonna be iterating through all of these things, use size, frame length, uh, and then we're just printing all that stuff. Print F, just F, uh-huh. And just IO uh, print F1. We don't even need this stuff. Right. Okay, so let's try to rebuild the whole thing. Uh, global variable function, uh, did you spell it correctly? Uh, could not be found. Really? Do, do I really have to prefix those things with that? I doubt that. Wait, where did it fuck up? Where did it fuck up? CWS frame. Uh, I, I forgot. Gen oh, yeah, generics. Fucking, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I keep forgetting about the generics. I keep forgetting about the generics. Uh, so, 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 Damn, that's actually kind of cool that you have to do like that. All right, a global variable of function name was expected in here. Wait, how do you do defs? Can you do def for strings and shit? Or do I have to do something like string? Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's whatever. Uh, okay, so opcode name. Okay, so let's actually port opcode name, which is a simple uh, function, honestly. So I'm gonna put it in here. So what do we have? Uh, we, we, we're gonna be just returning string. Another big video. Um, okay. So all of those things are pretty straightforward, in my opinion. Uh -huh. We just return this choice. Hey, motherfucker! Hey, hey, motherfucker! Hey, hey. Align by regular expression return. All right, so, and also there is a bunch of these kind of things. And I think we should be able to have like a temporary stuff. Um, uh, I wonder if I go into the STD, do I have something like a temporary uh, S printf? Um, no. T format. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. T format, mine, the front, the T format. Okay. So, string T format. I'm gonna get rid of this shit. Uh, yeah, we can just return that. Look at that. So we, T format just allocates uh, the formatted string in a temporary uh, allocator, and then we can clean it up later. So that's pretty cool. Can you ream do that? Can you ream do that? 
Uh, we might as well actually maybe get rid of this. I don't like it. I think I want to use the proper names in here. Okay, let's go. Let's try to uh, rebuild this entire thing. So what is it complaining about? Uh, being, yeah, it's a fan. That's fine. And here in the example, 23 S, uh, it's C3 WS, WS. Generic module, did you? Oh, fuck. Hmm. So we probably need to do a lot of different sub modules. Yeah, so I think the stuff that is generic should be even further in the sub-module, so we don't have to do stuff like that. So it's a little bit of a usability issue, but I think it is fixable at the end. All right, so here is the, uh, where is the other examples? Uh, I think it's a plain, yeah, this one. Right, logged frame, then we have log message. Do we even use log message? Uh, Actually, we only use the log message and nothing else, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, so let's go ahead and port this one. Hopefully this one is going to be a little bit easier to work with. Um, yeah, so this is the message kind. And here we even cast this entire stuff. Um, can I use a little bit of an Emacs magic in here? Super quick. So IO. Printfn like that. Uh -huh. So yeah, let's not do printfn. Just printf. So I have less things to modify. Uh, just printf, but without the string. Yes. Yes. Uh, D. Also get rid of that query replace that with that might as well even so here we actually do iterating through linked list notice that notice that so all right and this one is going to be actually this one okay so uh, this one has to be uh-huh sws message uh -huh, socket uh, opcode name c3ws uh -huh. mm, generics mm. oof 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 and oh my god I have to actually put them everywhere Actually, yeah, so there should be none of this stuff. Mm -hmm. 35, uh, and this one has to be this stuff. And this is this stuff. Oh, okay, um, so this one is just that. This one is just that. Uh, we're almost there. Null three. <laughs> Null three. Oh, for fuck's sake, finally. Holy shit. Uh, okay, login. Okay, so cool, 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 finally. So we now need to implement this shit. How do you work with the sockets in C3? I don't fucking remember. But I suppose one of the things we can do in here is actually. Uh, yep. Uh, can I find this function in std? Okay, here it is. Look at that. Mm. So... Uh -huh. I suppose it only makes sense to just do something like that. Yeah, to directly use all these functions mm -mm. <laughs> example c3 example c3 so just gonna import this stuff uh, and i feel like we're gonna just 
Um, I don't fucking know. Just copy paste the code, right? So there's nothing much you can do in here except simply copy paste the code. Uh, so let's go. So that's what we want to do anyway. Let's just go through the, all of this stuff and uh, that's it. Okay. So, so what's the first error we have in here? It's that one. So this one is a socket. Uh, socket. So here is the editor in four, and I suppose it should be available within the OS thingy. All right. So net editor. Where is the closest module? It's a net actually. So it's a net. Ah, so maybe. I don't even have to do that. All right, so it's going to be net. This one is going to be that. Uh, all right, so let's go through the rest of this stuff. 56. So this one is just that. But since we don't really have to do it like that, right? Uh huh. Unexpected type in here. Really? Uh. Well, I don't understand what you want. Expected type here. What? Ah! <gasps> okay, so it has to be... I see what's going on. Since it's a type, it has to be like this. Oh my god, because it's C3. Because it's C3. You can use the STDNet socket. Can I? Are you debating me? I swear to God, if you're debating me. Um, is there something like... Whatever. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, okay. 62. Okay, so if there is error in here... Yeah, debating me. Get out of here. Uh, I met ADDR. So, it's part of the OS. Right, so it's going to be Linux. It's not even there. Fuck me. Okay. What is it called? Oh, it's just like a, it's this one. All right. Mm -mm -mm. What was the example? So net. It's one of those. Um, and I suppose for these things we're gonna call them Z because we're gonna be passing them to here. Uh huh. This one is gonna be just zero. Okay. So, uh, what else do we have in here? It's 62. Uh, I.O. printf error um, hosts s host. And we can just return one in that case. Uh huh. 66. Mm -hmm. and this is four. Uh, so what I need to do, I need to replace arrows with dots as usual. Uh, 84. So go to error, just return one. Doesn't matter. 98. Turn one. Uh, three. Mm, honestly, I think I could just like make it a string or whatnot. Uh, no, it's four. Mm -hmm. So this size, message kind, message bin. Okay, when 27, send message when I send the payload. When I send the payload. Uh, let me f try to find this 3ws send the payload. So what we're doing, we're just using the SD. So the message kind will already have the kind and the payload. Can I just have the payload be that? So we don't have to cast anything. The chunk size, chunk size like this. And then I can just do something like that. So this is a send message, but here is another interesting thing. So we have a completely different paradigm here. So we can do try message. All right, so try message. 
And while we can do the message, we're logging the message. We don't have to free shit, honestly. Fuck free me the shit. Uh, and we're sending. We just keep sending shits. Yeah, we just keep sending shits and keep reading shit. We don't have to do that stuff. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I really like this actually. Mm. So yeah, so send the message. We send in the payload. So we have to repeat this thing. So that's what we do. It's pretty cool. So we send the message. Uh, right. Then we read the message. We log the message. Sleep a little bit. Send it again and again and again and again. Mm hmm. Okay, so the rest of this stuff. Uh, yeah. Let's not free anything. Right, because fuck that. Alright, so uh, 56. So we don't have to do that stuff. The rest of the compilation errors. Uh, 57, I suppose all of that stuff is net. Stop cookie pasting garbage in the chat, please. Uh, okay, so it's not a net. All right, stop doing that. It's not funny. You're not debating anyone. Uh, so, protocol uh, I unspecified. Okay, so that's funny. Uh, so, IP protocol uh, IPv4, I suppose. Um, so how can we this is annoying like why do i have to mentally translate things into different enums and shit all of a sudden right now i have to like i don't want to translate mentally anything get out of here um so all right annoying freaking annoying so maybe i don't okay so i see i i finally Uh, can I just like import OS and just do OS in here, please? What would, what would have been, I, like, I just don't want to mentally translate to different things. Like, please don't force me to do that. That's that's just dumb. Okay, so where do we get that stuff? IP protocol TCP. Where do we get that? Grep. Okay, so it's OS common, but what's the module? Okay, isn't that what I want? Or the error is different? The error is error different or what? Like, what do you want from me? Um, Prota could not be found. Did I spell it? Yes, I did. Fucking motherfucker, I did spell it correctly. And you can find it. It's located in some different place. Where are you located? So it's OS common uh, module. Yeah, so if not libc or not that or some other shit, only then. Why? Bro, what the fuck am I looking at? Like, why are you doing it like this? So if not libc and or. What were you trying to tell me with this? Oh, enums in goddamn C3 are so painful. It's insane. You know what, bro? Six. Like, I could not be asked to deal with this bullshit, honestly. I, I just don't give a shit. Like, come on. <clears throat> That's not even fucking funny. Anyways. Um, like, why is this bullshit I have to deal with? Get out of here. Just give me a freaking constant. Just fucking give me the constant. 
Uh, okay, so it's probably part of OS then. Uh, okay, so it's one. All right, what do we have in here? So it has to be int. Actually, delete trailing uh, trailing white spaces. So because there's too much bullshit in here. Okay, functions. All right. So socket. What was the OS? That's probably the function you want. Right? Did I did I guess it correctly? Fuck. Oh, and it's just one of these stupid shits again. Oh my god. Just give me a C library, please. Please give me a C fucking library. Oh give me that. Um oh, where is that? Uh so native socket to socket is not permitted so we have a separate thing here called natives which is maybe not that bad let's admit that maybe it's not that bad let's take a look at this native socket shit which is a distinct okay i see so what about the linux part so there's a okay so this is just in line fd and i do understand okay 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 fine okay so this is example and maybe for the socket it's a native socket sure maybe it doesn't even have to be distinct fine uh, all right so then i can build that stuff error native socket could not be fuck you um where was the native socket? Grip uh, native socket. So is that and the module is dot net. So why couldn't you find this? Did I spell it incorrectly or what? Bravo. I spelled it correctly, bravo. What she didn't like. Um, do I have to I, I actually don't think I have to prefix it? Do I have to prefix it? Uh, net native socket? Where did I get that? Wait, wait, wait. So it is located in. So here's the module. Okay, so this is the std net OS and supports inet. I suppose it does support inet. Do I have to. I, I don't know. How do I check if it supports INET? Um, how do I set it though? Um, I don't fucking know. Is there any examples on how to enable support INET? Uh, like, bruh, why are you doing me this dirty? OS supports INET. I, I'm so dumb, done with this shit. So does C3 have... I don't fucking know. Like, I don't want to deal with this shit. I just want to have some bindings to C library and be done with all of that. Like, why am I even worrying about this stuff? Uh, I don't have to think about this shit. I, like, a good language doesn't make you think about this stupid shit. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. So is it true, false? Do I pass it somehow? I don't fucking know. Like, what? What? Uh, so dumb. Anyway. But at the same time, we do have connect, don't we? So it's from the same shit and it's also from this shit. I don't fucking know. And there's not that many examples and I'm already tired. I spent too much time. Uh, why didn't you use TCP socket? Because I'm translating already existing code! 
Това по скин съчкуваш чунс. We have already existing code. Uh, we translate a specific already existing code for reproducibility fucking reasons. And anybody who said, bro, you just ask, is gonna be fucking permabands. All right. So, let me see. Mm. So, you've been streaming for two. I'm almost done, bro, bro. I'm almost done. That means if I stop right now, tomorrow's stream is gonna be 15 minutes. I just need to finish translating this stupid example and see if it works or not. That's that's it. Like I why I'm stopped at this stupid shit. Just give me a goddamn fucking socket and I will finish translating my my example and I check if it works or not. Like I don't want to like I'm almost there. It's just like I have to translate a couple of lines of code and we're done and I can finish the stream. Now I have to waste time on this crap. Okay, so uh, where can we look up some examples and, and stuff? Uh, how do I know if it supports a net? Where it's defined? There's so many fucking questions. I don't fucking know. Um, okay, supports inet. I'm so dumb with that. <laughs> so stupid. Um, okay, so third party C3. Okay. Maybe in the source code of this compiler we have something interesting. Obviously not. Um, so maybe there is like a definition. Like, no, there is no definition. Like, how do I know if it supports INET or doesn't support INET? Where is it defined? Uh, is it defined in any of the C code? What is it? What is it? Is there minus D? Well, yeah, so already somebody uh, asked that question. Maybe there is something like minus D. Or, for instance, if I do something like that, is... Where is the supports? Oh, I already lost it. Um, okay, supports. And it's not even... Because I remember it was like, in some places it was just like this. You know what, can I just fucking nuke this stupid shit and try without it? Uh, so it's OS, okay. And it's since it's OS... Uh, right. Mm -hmm. And if it is like that, I, I don't understand. I don't understand why this is not a thing. Common native socket socket. This is so convoluted. Why is it so okay? So there is this socket. Bro, I, I, why am I stuck on this shit? Why can't I just take a C code and just like translate it mechanically to C3? Why do I have to spend time on this stuff? I don't fucking know, bro. Over AI, fucking AI in my code. Uh, so it's so stupid. I'm almost done. I can't split this into streams. I can't split it into streams because then tomorrow's stream is gonna be fucking 15 seconds. It's just like I'm almost done. Just like give me the fucking type and I continue translating. Uh, it's so dumb. Like I fucking hate it. Why is the standard library so fucking convoluted? I don't know, dude. So bad. I can understand it with something really serious or difficult. This is fucking stupid. I'm wasting time on some stupid shit that should have not been a thing. This is what pisses me off the most. It's wasting time not, not, not on actually difficult things, but on some stupid shit that should have not been a thing. Mm -mm. So bad. So bad. Uh, all right, so um, I'm 
fucking know. Like, how do I? Uh, must this check be on module line? Check on what? What? What are you talking about? Stop saying nonsense. Um. So, oh, okay. Support sign net. Okay, here it is. Support sign net. Hmm. So if it's a libc or one of these things. Uh, so, and it does support INET, and I also fucked up a little bit somewhere. Okay, let me actually rebuild uh, the C3 compiler, because I think I fucked it up. Um, I think I fucked it up. Okay. Uh. Why am I wasting time with that? Like, seriously. I'm almost done. Why am I wasting time with that? It should not be a thing. Okay. Oh. Fucking no. My brain is not working that well anymore. Um... Am I missing something? What am I missing? Um, we can try to maybe find some things that may be using this stuff. Can you, everybody please shut up? Uh, okay, thank you. So, distinct POSIX. POSIX supports INET. But it's possibly... Okay. So, for instance... Mm, socket private. So we have this TCP thing, right? So there's a native socket mm -hmm. which they're taking from um, ROS and STDNet OS the same name space. That's a good question. Wait a second. Maybe it has to be something like this. You spell it I don't fucking know. STD maybe? Maybe that's what you want. I just can't find it. Mm -mm. It just it just can't fucking find it. Like it's in the code, but it can't find it because it's maybe behind some if devs or something. Like this is bad. This is bad design. Bad, 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 bad. It's really bad. Like it's it's the worst thing I've ever seen in any programming language. Like what the fuck is going on? Um, so annoying, right? And I'm almost there, almost there. Just fucking give me a way. Can we hack it at least? Can we please hack it? Can okay? Can I not use any of this shit? Or because can I just use a libc library? Right. So none of that shitty standard library of C three, but just libc. You, you know, normal Lipsy. Uh, do we have connect? No, it, it's all part of that net thingy. Uh, it's invisible unicorn. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh boy. Oh brah. It's bad. Yikes. Oh my god. It's such a yikes shit. Mmm. You know, like how how do I fucking include it? And, and there's no even a single fucking example. Uh, it's not even a single fucking example. It's, it's just like I like how do I do that? Do they even themselves use this standard library? It's just like it's not working. 
Um, STD net socket. STD net. Do I have to use this shit? I don't want to use this shit. Because I have a specific example that I just want to translate because I want to translate it one to one to make sure that it works. Oh boy, I'm, I'm already streaming for four hours. This is how much fucking time I wasted. This is, it's not even funny. It's not even fucking funny. Uh, so, and like, look at that. Studio OS. So when they are including, so this is a module net, right? They are using just directly, but they're importing these things. Uh huh. Do I have to import some of that stuff? Okay, let me let me try. P please don't tell me that native is some sort of private thing. D please don't tell me that it's some sort of a private thing. I won't be able to, um, you know, deal with that. The DIO is already imported, that's fine. Okay. Okay, can we just like... I, my hypothesis is that maybe it's just a, like an internal thing and they don't want you to use that because they want them want you to use their higher level socket thing i don't want to be using that because it, it it that means i have to spend more mental effort into restructuring my code to a different api i don't want to do that it's too much effort right now uh so that's, uh, dude i don't want to do that like it that means like like i'm connecting to like via resolving the it's just like i have to restructure everything i don't have mental capacity to do that uh, i just want to translate existing example one to one it looks like it's an internal function uh it's not function i can't find type um so can i all right, it's just like um, maybe I could make a socket NFD. Can I make it NFD? Holy shit! Okay, so implicitly socket into native socket is not per and the, the the most annoying fucking part is that. It knows about socket in it. You, it doesn't allow me to use that, so it means it's private. Okay. So can I just uh, cast it to FD at least? Okay. All right. It recognized it though. Um, so this is probably something like OS. Uh huh. Close is not can be found. Um, so it's probably libc. Uh huh. I think we have in the progress. Holy fucking shit! Okay. So, oh, this is so bad. This is so fucking bad. Hmm. So this is in case of an error because I can't connect to some shit. Uh, okay, let's let's actually not report error null for now. Uh -huh. Like I know that you're not supposed to use these kind of things, right? But again, I don't want to restructure my example to something else. It's just like it's already established and it works the way it works. I don't want to be touching it. I just don't want to be touching it, okay? Um, I want it to work the, the way it works. Um, Alright, 
let's see w3 is generic module why can't you just um Uh, what, what am I doing? Um, could not be found. So it's not a WS handshake. Come. So it's not a host. You don't like that. It's a Z. But we're also using it like this, and it's like. Um, uh, can I? This find handshake. Can I just do the Z string like that? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, did you mean CW kind in the generic? Yeah. C3WS. Oh, the shitty language, holy fuck. Okay. Can you, what, what, what do you want? What, what do you want from me? Um, did you mean, ah, fucking yeah, so g generic shit, okay. Okay. Um, oh, it wants generics in this case, okay. Do I have to do... Wait, wait, you tell me I have to do that in both cases? Oh my god. Well, I mean, it probably can go away if I just restructure that a little bit better. Uh, right, so just like... Th this is the way it is because it's structured this way. Um, Alright. And I probably have to do that. So, But I couldn't be bothered to structure it differently because, again, I just want to mechanically translate an example and see that it at least works. I can make it nice later. That makes any sense. Uh, all right. So, and like, I just want to quickly hack it, please, please. Just, just let me fucking quickly hack it. It doesn't let me quickly hack it. Um, so chunk lengths can be not be found. A chunk size, whatever. CWS read. Yeah, whatever. Just go away. So why is it so difficult to just hack things? Right. Just quickly hack things. Like why do I have to go through all of this shit? So it's probably Lipsy by the way. Um so 97. So what do we what do you want to do? Okay, so we want SD in here. So we don't have to do that because it's just a single message um 98 so what should you want from me so it has to be pointed by the way okay so we're gonna have sleep um okay so let's try to find sleep it's probably part of libc so i can pretty safely just do something like this um yeah you can't do that okay so, do you have sleep anywhere? Do you have sleep anywhere? Uh, where is the sleep? Threads, okay. Uh, so, win32 process, blah, blah, blah. Sleep, do oh my god, some fucking bureaucratic bullshit. Bureaucratic bullshit, stop with the bureaucracy, please, just let me do things stop being so goddamn authoritarian bureaucratic please i fucking beg you mate and it's probably you you can't probably put one in here right so you probably have to construct the duration out of one obviously right so to be type safe and shit it's always like fucking that obviously uh right so one uh so it's one millisecond now i'm not even fucking surprised honestly not even fucking surprised. Just give me a C fucking function. Um, so what is the fucking duration? It, like it's not even defined in here. It's defined somewhere else. Fucking there is need to split everything in a small, small lot of small files. Okay, where is that? Where is that duration fucking defined? 
uh, so it's time, oh, fucking obviously, it's in time somewhere, like, and now I have to, yeah, fucking multiply, yeah, I see what needs to be done, it's so fucking stupid, I'm so tired, right, so this is this the time, right, fucking STD time, then have to multiply it by what sec, you can't just do sleep one. It's too fucking easy. It's too fucking easy. You have to import two modules for one single stupid fucking constant. You can't just sleep for one fucking second. It's, no. You can't just do that. Alright, so STD time imported more than twice. Okay, so that's, that's understandable. Okay, and it's it's uh, obviously you can you have to prefix obviously right because sec is part of the time you have to prefix it you have to fucking prefix it obviously just fucking prefix it c3 what what do you want from me? you probably want some another generic stupid shit fuck you oh this shit is worse than rust what the fuck is that? Uh, dude, this is supposed to be just sort of like really close to C and really fucking compatible with C with a minimal fucking effort. I have a piece of code in C. I spent fucking over an hour translating that piece of code in C to C3. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? It was the worst experience I've ever had in my entire life. Maybe partially this is my fault in some sense, right? But I've just like, again, I took the piece of code in C, I was trying to translate to C3. Oh. Why does it have to be so convoluted? And it's probably, it's not even gonna work, probably. I don't believe that it's go, going to work first try. It's probably gonna sec fault. Like, I honestly, does anybody believe that it's going to work first try? Do you guys think it's gonna first work first try or is it gonna sec fault, like, miserably? If it's gonna fail with a stack trace, that would be a fucking miracle. I'm telling you. If there, if there will be any fucking information on what's fucking happening it's gonna be a freaking miracle it's 50 50 yeah i don't fucking know so yeah like I, I can see how we can get rid of a lot of these like you know generic parameters they don't really matter that much but anyway so um yeah let's fucking go uh right we're gonna serve this shit and um, all right, so I'm gonna rebuild this thing just in case, and I'm gonna just run example. Oh, ooh, oh, ho, 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 ho. yo, what the fuck? Client handshake was unwrapped. Let's take a look at it. So there's only like one place where that may happen, which is not bad. So that means it actually established the connection to some extent, right? So it kind of established the connection. Uh, so did we? We didn't really. We didn't receive any bogus or mogus shit anyway, so... Maybe this is because the connection was not even established, right? So because the handshake has fallen. So anyway, C3WS and... Uh, okay. Um, so if it's less than 3 or... Aha. Uh -huh, buffer size. I see, I see, I see. Ah, I think I know what the fuck is going on, chat. We never actually implemented any of that shit. So, okay, listen. Uh, we probably need to do leap c read. Um, and let's just like establish something like this. Read self buffer data buffer len. Something like that. Is it going to compile? Uh, not a member. What is it? Is it not data? 
Um, I'm not sure if I care. Uh, implicitly converted eyes size. Don't give a shit. Okay. So now, and this one is gonna be um, right. <laughs> okay. Mm, let's fucking go. Poggers in the chat. Poggers in the chat. I deserve poggers in the chat. I deserve fucking poggers in the chat. I just first try this beer. I <laughs> Holy fuck. It just works. <laughs> so. Yep. It took four hours to do that. Was it four hours? Yeah, it's, it's, it took four hours. So we managed to translate uh, that library. It's it's kind of, kind of a half-assed library, uh, but we managed to do that to C3. And that's already a good progress, right? Uh, dude, I already explained that multiple fucking times why I don't, don't want to use TCP socket or any of the fucking shit because I'm translating existing. Why am I even explaining to you? Why am I even explaining to you? I already explained it two times. You intentionally don't want to listen to you. You're just saying that to piss me off. Next time I'm going to fucking perm ban you. All right. So uh, this is a good starting point. This is a good starting point. We have some code. So um, I guess I'm going to clean it up off screen. Um, right. And we'll see if I want to stream anything more on that specific library right so i feel like maybe the next stream is going to be actually integrating that library into the game uh but yeah we'll see WebSocket server next time probably I, I think the server is not that difficult right so because sending and receiving is going to be the same it's it's basically the same me mechanism the only thing you need in here is essentially just handle the handshake Right, just handle the handshake, and, and that's it. And you, you basically have the server side. Uh, as soon as you have a server side, it's just like, uh, yeah, you have a complete library. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, that was a pretty good stream. That was a productive stream. It was a frustrating stream, but we managed to get through. Right, we managed to get through. All right, that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreation program. It's a show. But I missed those I love you. Mwah.